Are you sure you want to stream? Yes, I am. Okay, I am starting. Hello, hello, everybody out there in TV land. Is anybody out there? We should be live. Live and in Memorex. Or wait, is it live or Memorex? I think that's the way it goes. So, so let's just do an audio check. Is anybody out there watching the stream yet? We are broadcasting in live Technicolor. Live and in Memorex. Or wait, is it live or Memorex? I think that's the way it goes. We have three watching, and I bet you it's us three. Oh, let's nope, JPEG is here. Is anybody and Gary has audio. Awesome. We are broadcasting in live Technicolor. And in <clears throat> All right, wait, well, live or since memory? we're live and going, I'll we have take three the honor to do the uh, oh, intro. Nope. Okay, you. I am Quick Smoke, a.k.a. Mikey. I'm here with Local 4-Pack and a very, very special guest. She is a brand new YouTuber, has one video up, but a long-time supporter of the community. It is Bulk Girl. Say hello, Bulk Girl. Good evening, everybody. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, about your YouTube channel, what you're all about? Um, well, like, I have one video up. I put it up Monday. It's a um, build on Draco's uh, Taffington mod, Taff Taffington Settleton mod. And uh, it's a trading house or trading hub with boarding house kind of thing. It's a very transient uh settlement and i i really hope that came across i couldn't get uh my audio to work for it but i think the minimalisticness of it kind of hopefully conveys that and i do want to do some uh game streaming i'm looking into call of cthulhu that when it comes out at the end of the month and i'll see where it goes from there <laughs> it is a uh uh, well, I can say, first of all, don't worry about the audio thing. I mean, as much as we love to hear you talk, um, I think my first four videos didn't have any audio whatsoever. Uh, so it's something that you, you grow into, and it takes a lot of courage to do it at first because you're like, what the fuck do I say? And uh, it took me all of – Jesus – two years of knowing Gary and everybody else to finally get into the role playing of it. So, I mean, you're doing good. You're doing good. Yeah. It's uh, definitely different trying to talk when you're not talking to anybody, but you are talking to people. That's why one of the reasons why I actually kind of role play as I do my tours, you know, I'm always talking to Codsworth or, um, you know, the settlers, they always want to talk to you. So they're like, hello, general. And you're like, oh, hey. And you just kind of hold up a conversation with them. And then I act like I'm telling Codsworth or whoever's with me, you know, my, whatever companion I have with me, act like I'm explaining to them what's around. Or, like, I'm just making an observation. You know, most of the time, you know, I act as if I've never seen it completed. So I'm like, oh, wow, check this out. You know, so uh, that way I, I don't have to, like – think about how I'm talking to the actual audience. I can just like make believe there's and you know, kind of a makeshift audience there. So maybe you can try something like that and that'll help you out. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good idea. I'll uh keep that in mind the next time I do that. I'm almost done with my next build. I'm doing a cannibal um bar and grill at Coastal Cottage with uh, Draco's mod with an attached tree house. I wish I could have got cannibal? it done for today. A cannibal, yeah. Nice. Cannibal bar and grill. Um, it looks so good right now. I really wish I could have got it done, and so you guys could have showed it off. But I don't know. I'm very. I'm. I'm proud of them. You know. I don't. I don't go for the the huge builds that y'all do with all the the glitching into place and stuff. In fact, at Taffington, I didn't use the pillar glitch or the uh, rug glitch to get it to the house sections to fit. It took me about 45 minutes to get it to fit perfectly on top of the, the existing house, but you can't tell there's a seam or anything. 
I so you definitely did an awesome, awesome job without oh, using the you. pillar glitch. Yeah. And uh, just if you're if you're just joining us, yes, this is Vault Girl joining us for our special guest today. Uh, continue. Sorry. Oh no, that's okay. Yeah, I tried to convey humor with the different shops. Um, I had a lot of fun making the the tree emporium. That was my favorite one there. And I, I don't know if it, I yeah I don't know if it came across, but he was actually supposed to be a um, a black uh, arms weapon dealer. That's why I had my, to. I think my favorite is the three flamingos. Oh yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that was a nod to my daughter's first settlement at Sanctuary. She built the Three Flamingo Shopping Center. And so that was a nod to her. You did uh, You did actually quite a few menages. You did one to uh, Mr. Stronium. You did one to Draco. Mm-hmm. Uh, I thought it was really neat how you did that. You know, especially on a first video, giving, giving shout-outs right away. That's That's pretty awesome. Well, Stronium, I had told him or joked with him that I was going to make a, a tree trading hub in Fallout 76. And I thought, well, he probably won't be able to see me do something like that in 76, but I know he would be able to see something on from Fallout 4. So I went ahead and made that. And while, yeah, it was a joke, it was, you know, I wanted to prove good on that joke, you know. I'm not just... Uh, I'll talk all the time. Well, I definitely like what I'm like. If those that hadn't heard, this is the first time I've seen her her build. So, um, which likely is the first time for some of the people in the audience here. Um, and I'm loving what I'm seeing so far. So yeah, I I wanted to put up. a dead body behind the curtain, but I couldn't get it to sit on the bench. So no dead body, but yeah, it's it's pretty hard to get uh, like bones or a body to. Uh, to sit in the chair. I tried once for like a half hour to 45 minutes um, on my uh, haunted build in uh, Merkweather, I think it was, uh, to put the bones in the chairs and they just kept sliding out and they wouldn't go right. It's a pain. So let's get down to the nitty gritty. Let's get some questioning going on. Sure. How long have you been gaming? Um forever since before video games i grew up in a family that uh, was a, a very into gaming from card games to dice games to board games my grandmother and i would sit there for hours on weekends and we were camping playing cribbage and then in the 80s when video games became uh, popular i got now, into you... my go ahead go ahead i was gonna say do you do pvp no, this uh, Fallout 76 will be my first PvP game. A girl after my own heart. <laughs> well, you know, the reason why I ask is that and I think it's, it's not as much as today because uh, females in gaming is becoming more popular. But I can remember um, back in the day, I would say probably about 15 years ago when online gaming started. Uh, when you found the... It, it was all like this in chat rooms too. A female into the room and it was like... Uh, Night at the Roxbury's, you know, guys would surround me like, hey, what's up? What's up? What are you doing? What's up? What's up? You, you never had that uh, that problem? No. Um, actually, I've had the opposite, especially with my daughter's friends when she was in high school. They always thought it was very cool that their mother played the same video games they did or could talk and, you know, hold on a conversation about video games just as well as them. So I've never been um, ridiculed, I guess that you would I want to say, for being a gamer. That's, and I know a, awesome. a, a lot of people have, and it's it's sad because you know girls are just as good at games as guys are, and just like some guys are better at crocheting and knitting than girls are. It's yeah, all in what you some, develop. In some cases, girls are better than guys at some video games. So, yeah, I mean, it's, you know, the whole, I, I, I think it's, 
you know, to think that, you know, girls shouldn't be gaming or, you know, whatever. I think that's just kind of stupid from anybody's point of view to think that, you know, it's just completely ridiculous. But at the same time, I mean, I kind of understand what, what uh, Mike's talking about because, um, like, I played, you know, anybody that's <laughs> listened to the, the podcast in the past, I brought up Star Wars. I played Star Wars. Every time we'd get uh, a girl in our guild, and if they would happen to come into, um, we didn't use Discord, we used um, TeamSpeak for that. Every time a girl would come in there and talk to any of us, it was just like, you know, the hormones would just kick in, and everybody's thinking that, you know, somehow they're going to find some internet love or something. <laughs> it was like, really, guys? Um <laughs> You guys really need to back down, back off it's a little bit. Star this, Wars, not Second Life. You mean? Uh, yeah, yeah, right. So, uh, it's just kind of like, you know, she's just trying to have a good time. She's not trying to have internet sex, you know, <laughs> while she's trying to play a video game. Here, this is ridiculous. Yeah. Just you know, yeah, I get what you're saying. Grow up and you know, try to be mature. Yeah. Well. <laughs> I found that no matter what it is, there are people who think you shouldn't be there. It doesn't matter whether it's video games or a job. It's just the way society is right now. And it's it's sad, but it's always been that way. And it'll probably always be that way. It just takes the brave few to thumb their nose up at it and say, you know, no, this is the way I'm going to do do things and and just do it and ignore what people say. Now you said your your daughter does gaming and online gaming as well. No, she did well. She likes playing. Um, oh, the Valve game um, with the uh, the spy and the. I cannot think of the name of the game. But she, I know she played a little bit of it online, but not much. We're just, my son is into online gaming. He's played some of the Borderland uh, online co-op and Call of Duty and a few others. But uh, Now, do you worry about that? Like, my sister um, just barely let her son, who's almost 18, um, go online like a couple of years ago. And she was very, very worried about him going online. Like, she limited his online part of it um, due to, like, you know, predators or giving out personal information. Do you worry about that at all? No, I don't, because I've raised my children to not trust anybody online. (laughs) At first glance, you know, you need to sit there and get to know somebody. And uh, and we discuss the dangers and... It's a novel I think concept to have somebody actually be a parent. That's weird. Overstress it, then it becomes a fear. And then they'll never make any friends or be, you know, want to team up with somebody new. And they'll be more likely to just shoot everybody on site. Where if you just say, you know, these kind of people are out there and they may shoot you and try to kill you, but not everybody's going to be like that. Right, right. You know, yeah, I was, what... I was just saying, um, I forgot I have to actually push the microphone or push the button off my thing to. It's a novel concept to actually um, be a parent. You know, <laughs> this day and age, it seems like, you know, it's like, heaven forbid you actually teach your kids that there's going to be assholes out there and just to look out for them and, and not to trust everybody until you've you know, been able to vet them and all that kind of stuff. I think that's brilliant. Yeah, but then you also have the parents out there that let their kids be chipmunks and they say shit that makes me blush and that's a lot. <laughs> you know, it doesn't right. take, it, it's really hard to make me blush, but some of the shit that comes out of these kids' mouths, I'm like, God damn, like, really? Right, right. I, I re- kind of raised my children a lot the way I was raised, you know, my dad was like, you know, don't ever start a fight, but if you're in a fight, finish it. And he never forbid me anything. 
especially like with, with, um, drinking. My dad would order me a drink as soon as I turned 14 when we would go out for dinner. By the time I was 21, I never drank. In fact, I can't even stand the smell or taste of alcohol now. So it's like, because it wasn't forbidden, I never was tempted to go and get drunk or, you know, try anything like that. I'm not saying that's the best way to have done it. And I didn't allow my kids to drink. No, but, you know, I did apply that same principle as if I don't forbid it, but sit there and talk about it with them, it decreased their kind of longing to go and discover it on their own, right. especially if right. it's a bad choice. Um, well, you know, we kind of grew up similar. My parents were the same way. Um, they would have uh, card games, like uh, poker nights. Mm -hmm. with their co-workers and everybody would come over and my father would toss me a beer so you're in my house as long as you're not stupid have a beer mm -hmm. when i was 13 he was letting me go out with kids that were three or four years older than me already in college going to college parties trusting that i wasn't going to do anything stupid mm -hmm. and on my 21st birthday i chose to work instead of going to a bar and i really i only drink on special occasions and that's very rare for me yeah it, i don't know i a lot of the parents that had or my daughter's friends their their parents were oh you can't do this because you're too young and you can't do that and my daughter's like well well why my mother lets me or you know you know, things like that. And I'm like, well, you know, some parents are just so overprotective that, you know, their kids live in a little bubble. And I found that it becomes more harmful in the long term. Oh, yeah. If you don't allow experimentation under guidance, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Not that I ever let my kids do anything, you know, harmful or, you know, I didn't say go out and do drugs. I'm like, you know, stay away from drugs. Um, and they've never tried them. You know, they've been pressured, tried to be pressured by their peers and they've never tried them. And I'm very proud of them for that. You know, they had the balls to stand up and say, no, I don't want it. My mother said, this is what it's going to do to me. And I'm not going to, you know, delve into that. So. So we, we got a question from the audience here. Um, mm -hmm. G4 wants to know what your first video game you ever played was. My first video game I ever played was Pac-Man on the Atari. On the Atari 2600. Yes. Yeah. That was my first the, video game system. And anybody that played that game a lot would know that there was actually a pattern to every level. Yes, and if you, as long was. as you followed that pattern, you could just like cruise through it. And I, I, I was young enough; I didn't learn the pattern right away. But my mom, was amazing enough, because she's not a video gamer at all. But back in the day, she had like the first eight or nine um, levels of the pattern memorized, and I always thought that was pretty damn cool. Yeah, I the only way I could beat my grandmother at Pac-Man was to learn the patterns. My grandmother had like the highest score in our whole family. She was a huge Pac-Man fan. That's awesome. That's yeah. the only way I could beat <laughs> Grandma doing Pac-Man, that is absolutely great. Um so you've been a big supporter of this community for a really long time. Uh How'd you uh, get into it? Like, who who introduced you? And... Um, it was actually one of Draco's videos. I think it was his um, uh, my thoughts on Fallout seventy six, because it, it was like right after um, the teaser trailer, and uh, I was looking for opinions on it. And just happened to come across, then uh, he's going to kill me for saying this, but an older gamer <laughs> out there who had a positive attitude about it. And so I subbed to his channel and just started showing up and 
then I started showing up in everybody else's streams and commenting, hopefully, on their videos and just um, as a show of support and 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 kind of thanks for welcoming me into welcoming me into your community. Well, you know, been... we try to be pretty open, so now it's you know, it's not just our community; it's your community now. So, you know, um, you, I mean, heck, now we're watching your. Your first video, and before long, you'll have more videos out there. And I mean, you participate with all the stuff, you know, and and uh, you're in most of the streams, and and uh, at least as many as you can get to, anyway. And and uh, you're watching the videos and all that kind of stuff. So you're as much of, the, I mean, you don't necessarily have to have videos out there to be part of the community. So yeah, yeah. Thanks for well, joining. Quite frankly, sometimes I even have computers up and trying to watch two streams every once in a while i get my comments mixed up but <laughs> i've done yeah. that too <laughs> so now that you've uh you know and, and excuse the uh the phrase here uh popped your cherry on being a youtuber how do you feel um it's something i've really wanted to do for a long time i just was a little hesitant about it. I'm like, oh, you know, what would I actually put on my channel? It's like, I'm not, while I really do enjoy building in Fallout, I'm not a builder. You know, I I like to decorate, but not so much of the building itself. Um, I'm more a, I like to play games. That's, I play games Every day. It does not matter where I'm at. I have a game with me. And if I don't have my DSs with me, I have a phone game. And I am not ashamed to admit that I do play a phone game. <laughs> you know. Um, oh, yeah. There's my ghost settler. <laughs> oh, yeah. That. yeah. I they, love that. Yeah. <laughs> Freaked me out the first time I saw that happen. I feel, I feel like it's not a proper settlement. Like, if you have that weight bench in there. It, it's not a real settlement unless you've got a ghost settler pumping some iron. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, it, it's it's different than, you know, like I said, I do want to do some game streaming. and We'll see where it goes from there. It's like I don't want a huge channel. I just want something small that I can do um, on my time off. And not that I have a lot right now, but my daughter's going to be done with junior college i believe not this december but next december and i'm not going to be driving her everywhere so i'm going to be having a lot of free time of course she and i want to work on a channel together and that's awesome you know uh, you know one of the good things about this community and uh i've said it before it, the wide variety we have um we're not just locked into Fallout. I mean, Fallout has brought us all together. But we're not all just locked into Fallout. We have people who play um, a wide variety of games, like JPEX doing um, uh, Assassin's Creed Odyssey, um, On a Whim, uh, 7737 has been doing numerous things. Last night she did Drake's Fortune. Um, She's planning on doing Far Cry 5, uh, five, four, five, Far Cry 5, you know, so you're not just, you don't have to be just locked in to Fallout, and as long oh, as you're yeah. enjoying what you do, who the hell cares what you do? Oh, yeah, no, no, I never, I always knew that if I do do a channel, it would never be locked into, I don't want to be like a Bethesda gamer because there's um a guy who just started up a channel. Not unless they pay me. Yeah, yeah really. really. Not uh, not too long ago. And, I mean, he does nothing but Bethesda coverage. I'm like, why would you lock yourself into that? I mean, yes, you have a good channel. Yes, you're growing ra amazingly fast. Um, but uh, why lock yourself into that? Because VGS does not put out games all that often. And while I know there are, there's the Zenimax Studios is considered part of it, and it and a few others, it, it still feels like it's going to end up being a hindrance in the long run. 
you know, it's better to spread yourself not too thin, but over a wider area. Excuse me for a second. (laughs) I don't mean to interrupt you, but we have an elusive Tony in the room right now. Very rare. Very rare. How are you doing, Tony? It's been way too long. And you can't keep creeping quiet enough for me not to notice you, buddy. Tony. I love you. Sly some bitch. Welcome, my <laughs> friend. It's been such a long time. I'm sorry. I had to I had to shout him out there because he hasn't been around enough lately. Not a problem. So so we do have some comments from the uh from the, the chat here. So um sushi cat she wanted to thank you for the sub and that she subbed you back and um i actually thought i had subbed to her a while ago until i saw the list beside your on your page and noticed i hadn't and i feel bad about that because i thought i really had gotten everybody yeah although last time i found out stronium had a channel and i did not know that and i did sub to him also because wow. it's like I keep thinking I have everybody. No kidding, yeah. Um, so G Force, there's nothing wrong with older gamers. No, and, ne- uh, there never has been. JPIC says uh, you're in good company being in the uh, community. Uh, oh, thank you, JPIC. And then uh, Die on a whim seven seven three seven. She says uh, she appreciates your your participation in in her streams and always adds something to the chat. Oh, thank you, Di. Um, Chaos, he subbed to you and said, welcome to the community. Oh, thank you. Nacho has a great point. The first video is always the hardest. Yes, it yeah. was. And what just I was just so upset I could not get the audio to work because I was trying so hard not to laugh. But I there was some funny little one-liners in there that uh, I, you know, because I talked the whole way through. You can tell because it took me so long to get through the the video or the whole settlement because i was talking all the way through it yeah Um, and i actually recorded it three times wow i'm like forget it i'm done that's good enough (laughs) yeah i've done that before uh we got a couple people that said they'll build the build the settlement and you can just come in and decorate it we got uh, g4 and die both said that not a problem i like the decorating part that was a lot of fun I'm having oh. a lot of fun decorating the cannibal basement right now. I had to go look for human meat all over the wasteland. It's hard to do that when you're not a cannibal. <laughs> we have a uh, another YouTuber that uh, has made it very popular on her uh, her decorating, and that's Phoenix. So we could always use another decorator out there. That's right. Oh no, I don't think anybody could ever top. Uh, Phoenix, Phoenix, that she is just absolutely amazing. I was blown over by her uh, uh, home plate build. I absolutely oh, I love know. that. That thing was amazing, and the fish tank. Good lord, that was great. I am still waiting for her tutorial on how she made that fish tank. That is amazing. I imagine she probably shrunk a lot of stuff down. Um, JPIC, real quick. Uh, the reason why you're on here is because Ball Girl doesn't have a uh, much content, so I figured I would show the monthly tours of uh, from my build challenge. So everybody had the uh, first monthly tour. Um, I've got the videos going for it, and yours was first up, so that's why we're seeing JPIC stuff up here, um, kind of as another nod to the the community and and all that kind of stuff. So if you see something on here that you like. Um, go check out the playlist for the first month uh, tours from the Evolution of a Settlement Challenge and then go find the, that uh, channel and subscribe to them and you'll probably find a lot more uh, good content. Hello, KJ. Uh, yes. So, uh, go ahead. Uh, I was going to say, G4 is asking if I enjoy music and I do enjoy music. I like um, oldies. Oldies. I mean, like um, the big bopper and oh, stuff like all the way up through the sixties and fifties, sixties, um, the beach boys, um, old time country music, like Loretta Lynn and Patsy Klein, the old about, stuff. And the Conway first, Twitty. Um, 
you know, I think Tom Lee Twitty was just a little bit overrated, but that's just <laughs> me. Um, I like his music. I, I just wasn't crazy about the man. I guess it's kind of, I'm probably going to get murdered for this, but the same way about Elvis. I like his mu- music, but I really never cared for him. Right there with you. So. I'm not a huge yeah. fan, but I do like some of his music. Yeah. Um, and the first music I ever bought or CD I ever bought was uh, Tommy Shaw's Girls with Guns. It's one of my absolute favorites. Wow. And probably nobody's heard of it. Nope. But you should know who Tommy Shaw is. Uh, nope, I'm not. Nope. He was the lead singer for Sticks. Uh, okay. Yeah. I did. See, I'm I'm horrible with names. I don't even know who I I'm talking too. to right now. I mean, who are you guys? <laughs> I don't yeah, know. Okay. yeah. Um. Yeah, I don't remember a lot of names, but I do remember his. So, um, you're talking about '76. Are you looking forward to it? You plan on getting it? Absolutely. I pre-ordered it the day after E3 was over. And the only reason I waited that long was I just wanted a tad bit more information, but I knew I was going to pre-order it anyways. I have been excited since the first three chords of country music. They didn't even have to play the song because I knew we were going to West Virginia and I did not care that all these people were like, oh no, it's Western Virginia. I'm like, no. It is West Virginia. I would bet my life on it. And I was right this time. <laughs> well, but, and uh, thank, thankfully you were because, you know, then we wouldn't be having this conversation. Yeah, true, true. But, I mean, it's like, you know, I had one second of doubt about, was it three minutes after the teaser trailer uh, dropped and Kotaku was saying, oh, well, it's an online Rust clone. And I'm like, yeah, I'm too old for PvP. And then I'm like, screw it. It's a Fallout game. I love Fallout, and I'm going to play it. Well, and if and I'm going to get shot, then I get shot. And, and the reload. best part is I don't, I don't think there's actually going to be that no. much PvP in it. I think you could do PvP if you wanted to, but I think you're going to easily be able to avoid PvP as well. Oh, absolutely. So. They've made it so soft core. It couldn't even be. I'm, no, I'm, someone's having a clicking problem with their mic. Oh, that's me. I'm playing with the earbud. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. I'm normally up doing things in my kitchen during the streams. I'm not used to the one being in the... <laughs> in the, the hot kitchen. seat? Moving, not moving, right. I know. You guys, I'm canning and dehydrating during your streams. Oh, I just awesome. carry my computer from room to room. <laughs> <laughs> so... um. G4 wants to know if it was a slip that you said CD and not vinyl, or if it actually was you waited until you could buy a CD. I think I he's trying to till, figure out how um, old you are. Oh, I'm 50 years old, hon. Huh? I'm 50. I turned 50 in July. No way. Say, you have, you Absolutely. Have, you have two kids that are out of high school, then yeah, she's, she's yeah. not My not daughter's 24. 30. My son is 18. Yep, yeah, I am 15. Or I'm not no. 50. I'm 50, yeah. There you go. So you did the wait till you got CD. Given it away. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah. So you did buy CD and not vinyl. I did. I waited till CD because, um, you know, cassettes they broke too easily. I'd see my mom's get eaten up, and you know, I just kind of waited till something better came along to spend my money on music because. A lot of the stuff I listened to was on the radio. I could still find those old um, time radio stations. It wasn't until we moved from Michigan down to West Virginia that I didn't get those stations anymore. And that's when I started buying my own music. That's the worst. When you get used to certain stations and then you move. Mm-hmm. and you know, Like I used to, I, I lived, um, as most of you know, I lived in Boston. Uh, which is why I love Fallout 4 so much, because I've been to most of the places that are in the game. But there's this one radio station that I constantly listen to. It never left my radio. I listened to it in the morning because it was talk in the morning and then it was rock and roll at night. 
And I now live in Vermont, where everything is hip hop. Nothing against hip hop. I like hip hop, but there are no good talk shows. There are no good rock shows. Nothing so says just... hip hop like Vermont. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, when I think hip hop, I'm thinking Vermont. Well, you know? You say Vermont, I think greatest. syrup. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> Maple syrup and cows. I don't know. That's hilarious. That's interesting, though. Oh, we got a question from uh, JPIC. Um, what platforms or platforms do you play on? And for 76, we decide which crowd to get to play with. So I play on... Uh, well, obviously, this depends on which game I'm playing. But I am currently playing a game on my computer, my PS4, my PS3, and the Xbox 360. Um, I will be playing Fallout 76 on the PS4 only, though. Well, unless I can figure out how to set up a profile on my son's uh, Xbox One. Then I'll be playing on the Xbox One occasionally, but mainly on PS4. And so far, I think I've teamed up with Plaz from this little community and then uh, somebody else from one other. Yeah, I know Dai will be on PS4, but I think she's also going to be playing a little bit on uh, um, PC. And um, I don't know if there's anybody else out there. I know there's some other people on PS4, but... Um, yeah, maybe, not many. Maybe Kevin, um, if he decides to play, uh, it still might be up in the air. But yeah, and we got we got um, cats in here. Um, she's she's campaigning to get you up to at least thirty subs. Oh, so <laughs> thank you, she, cat. She's sharing she's sharing your uh, sharing your channel. Let's get everybody over there and uh, see if we can't get you up there. I know you're at twenty when I sub tonight, so. Should yeah, be, I was so shocked. I did not think I got the video uploaded right, so I was trying to figure out what I did wrong on that, and then all of a sudden I got a comment from Brian, and I'm like, "Oh my lord, it went up!" <laughs> but I, Monday was really a good for, good day for me. I was so excited. So Ooh. it was just really weird, though, getting oh, that we first. Uh, excited to finally get some content. Yeah. Yeah. And I guarantee you, we're now see now that you have one up, we are going to be harassing you to get more up. That's right. When uh when JPIC started streaming today, I was heavily into my tree house getting it built. But I got to the point where now I have to go and uh get some weapons and bring them to Coastal Cottage so I can decrease the build limit. We have some news from the chat room. It looks like you just hit thirty. And JPIC was that 30. Let's uh, see if I can confirm this. One second. I'm really slow on computers. And oh, you are you at guys. 30 subs. Wow. Thank you, guys. I really well, what's, what's awesome is you had so however many subs before you even had video out there. That's kind of like Cat. Cat, how... Um, Kat had a, a bunch of subs before she even had her first video out there. Yeah, and, I think I uh, had like eight or something like that. Yeah, we it had was to, weird. It's like, yeah. It was weird seeing people sub to my channel, and I'm like, guys, you don't have to do that. It's okay. I have no content, you know. But That's hilarious. It was still so cool also. Well, you know, we use the words community a lot, and I like to think it's more than a community. We're We're pretty much a family here, and Family supports family. Oh, JPIC, you didn't interrupt me. It was totally fine. I probably needed a break anyways. And plus, I need to go find more skulls. They yeah. won't let you craft things unless you actually have them in your inventory. Skulls? Oh, for Yeah, decorating? I need skulls. That's, yeah, if yeah. you're going to be doing, uh, if you're gonna be doing uh, a cannibal thing, yeah, you're going to need them. Yeah, I didn't. I, yeah, that's one perk I never take and kind of always kind of made me queasy, actually, whenever people have talked about it or 
Oh, I watched somebody, I think it was many a true nerd eat his way through the Brotherhood of Steel in uh, Fallout New Vegas. <laughs> and I'm like, I can't watch this, but I want to watch this. You know? Well, yeah. And um, it's really, I don't know how many, I don't know if you are, how many in the uh, watch the stream is, but Lois, um, uh, X Joker Girl X. She, when she, she tried, she's tried a couple different survival playthroughs and she, out of all the people early on that was trying survival because when, when they finally like turned on survival for fallout four, um, you know, a lot of the YouTubers, they were, they were going to try to do the survival thing and, and all that kind of stuff. She was the only one that actually put some thought into what she was going to do and how she was going to build her character. Mm -hmm. uh, and she took out melee with blitz and she made herself a cannibal yeah because she yeah. knew she knew she was going to have to eat and mm -hmm. you know all that kind of stuff and it, she, if you know her she's a sweet little innocent girl and like it's kind of like um anybody that's played any other game with denise like um you, you can ask mikey mikey's played some games with her and she's vicious. She she don't mess around. She gets going at it, and uh, she'll start cussing and everything else is just hilarious. Oh my god, yeah, you know she's so so sweet and innocent when she's talking to you on, on like Discord and stuff like this. You get her in a PvP. Ooh, that girl's saying stuff that oh my god, <laughs> scare the hell out of me. <laughs> Do you ever change like? You know, because you you're, you seem, you know, fairly sweet and all that kind of stuff. Like, yeah. yeah. When, when you're playing, do you you start screaming at the TV and yelling at whatever and all that kind of stuff, too? I have been known to throw a controller across the room once or twice. Awesome. Not You are, you are part of the community, <laughs> then. <laughs> so, Gaming for XP would like to know, what is your favorite game or game series apart from Fallout? Morrowind. Morrowind is my absolute favorite game. Um, I've actually thought about this all week, or well, actually over the last two weeks, because I knew somebody was going to ask this. And I debated over a lot of different games, and it kept coming right back down to Morrowind. I absolutely love Morrowind. Well, wasn't it... Um... Was it Denise that... I think Oblivion was hers, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. Well, there's parts of Oblivion I, I like the um, the Dark Brotherhood and uh, the Thieves Guild quest line in Oblivion. But that, I don't know, the main quest for me wasn't that great. Although it was a lot better than Skyrim's main quest. Um, Not sure I've good. Put, awesome question. Yeah. Go ahead. I was just gonna say, um, I, uh, Nacho wants to know that you know, since you like to cook, have you ever been tempted to recreate any of the recipes from Fallout Four? I have. Or any other game. I have from Fallout Four. I have. I'm seriously thinking about getting the Fallout cookbook that's coming out on the twenty third. Um, yeah, that. that I, I think I've you need to, and then that. tell us all about it. Maybe do some videos or something about it. I might. Actually, I, I might do that. That's a good idea. Because I would like to do a cooking video every once in a while. But maybe on the weekends. But, I'll tell you uh, what. If you do a cooking video on the Fallout Cookbook, I will go out and buy the cookbook, and I will do one after you. You're on. Challenge accepted. All right. You heard it here, folks. She's got to put one out, and then when that she does, I have to put one out. All right, it comes out the 23rd on Amazon. I will get it pre-ordered tomorrow. I'm going to have to wait until I get paid, but I will buy it. Not a problem. This is going to be awesome. And you got to show you going out hunting for that death claw, too. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. That would be awesome. I'll uh, find a wizard and dress him up. <laughs> <laughs> so this next question actually is from Enclave for Gary. Um, uh, 
I have a question for Gary, actually. Uh, any new settlement challenges? And if so, the next one or so I might just try. Well, um, I was going to do one, and it was supposed to be this summer, and I had a partner in crime for that. But um, uh, they were on a hiatus during the summer, and so we never got around to it. Um, and now with 76 coming out, um, kind of takes away some of the interesting aspects of what that challenge was supposed to be. So Kat and I were going to do a challenge where we were going to take a group of people. It was either like four or five people, or it had to be like 15 to 20 people. One or the other, right? You couldn't be somewhere in the middle just because it just didn't seem like it would work out very well. But what you do is, like, let's say you took the four people and you picked the, the order in which those four people were going to be. And whoever the first person was, they would build something in a settlement, right? So we'd decide on whatever settlement it was going to be. That one person would build a building. Everybody else had to build that building um, to match what that person did, you know, exactly where they did it and all that kind of stuff. Right. And then the next person in line would build the next building. And so then everybody would have to build, you know, basically everybody after them would have to build that building on down the list until you got to the end. And then you'd see like the four different people or whatever, four or five different people and, and like how different all of their stuff would be. And, and, uh, like what the results of that settlement would end up being with, you know, the different build types and all that kind of stuff. So it was going to be difficult. It was going to have to be vanilla only because of the different uh, platforms and mods and all that kind of stuff. Plus, you know, somebody like myself who doesn't use mods, then, you know, it's going to be really hard for me to build something where everybody else is using mods. But that was going to be the challenge that we were going to do. And, and, Cat was going to help me kind of put that together since um, the evolution challenge was just so much work. I was like every night I was doing stuff for that challenge, um, going through videos and and uh, creating, you know, the update videos and the reminder videos and all that kind of stuff. And it was just a lot of work. Um, plus, I had to stay on top of doing my own stuff. So um, she was going to help me with that. And, uh, but then actually it wasn't even long after we kind of discussed that, that 76 was announced and it was kind of like, well, if we can build with each other, then well, <laughs> you know, we could just do that. So that was the, that was the next challenge I was going to do. But, uh, since that ain't, ain't really something that seems like it's going to be a worthwhile idea. Um, I thought about redoing another Rube Goldberg challenge. So yeah, there's, there's your answer. Did you see the um, the Game Informer article in '76 where they were talking about uh, 12 people getting together and linking their camps and building a settlement I with heard, 12 people? Yeah, I heard vaguely about that. Yeah. Um, that sounds pretty cool. Yeah. It sounds like I know the camps are going to be the smaller area, but then they have those community settlements. Which is, this is kind of sounds like what you were going for, the community settlement you can build. And then when you leave, you can leave what you built and people can add on to that. Right. So it's going to end up being a big conglomeration of people coming in and working on one settlement. Yeah. And I, yeah. Really, I like that idea. That would be really cool. Yeah. Yeah, I think that would be really sweet. So, um... What's your favorite part of Fallout 4? A Fallout 4? Just exploring. I don't like the main quest line. Um, I You don't like the storyline of it? Or no, just no I, don't, I don't like it. And I don't like the fact that no matter... That I have to choose the Minutemen to keep everybody alive except the Institute. I don't like that if I decide I want to uh, join the railroad that I have to kill the Brotherhood. Although it is fun sneaking on the ship and laying mines all over it every time I just go to visit and tell the, you know, the you become hostile to them. And then when you pop up there, it uh, they automatically start going off. Um, 
but no, I, I did not like the fact that I had to go and kill the Brotherhood, or if I I only did the Brotherhood play through one time just to say I got that ending, and then I had they wanted me to go kill the railroad, and it's like no, I, that's not how I want my end game content to be being chased down by you know railroad agents or the Brotherhood, along with the synths that didn't die in the explosion at CIT building. It made no sense to me, you know. And I, I, while I get where they were going with Maxon's Brotherhood of Steel, I don't like it. I don't like um, how racist he is and how uh, single-minded he is. And it, it kind of almost makes me wonder, because we meet Maxon in Fallout 3 as a child. And... right. I it's only been six months I think since I've played Fallout Three and I talked to him and you know very nice polite kid you can read all about his lineage through the Brotherhood of Steel or his um, his family's um, uh, travel or you know history in the Brotherhood of Steel on his terminal and it's like how did he go from this sweet little boy to this monster that we find in, in Fallout 4. They don't explain that. I mean, did somebody piss in his kibbles or something? I don't know, but... Well, do you... Um, have you ever watched... Do you watch Oxhorn at all? I do. I watch him all the time. I watch his lore videos all the time, I'll say. He, he did a video on whether or not is it evil to destroy the Brother of Steel. Yeah, I saw that. I saw that. And it's a really great one because you take in consideration of when you blow up that Bridwin, you're not just blowing up Brother of Steel, you're bro- you're blowing up little initiates. There's the children that are on there. But they have the same mentality as the Brotherhood of Steel. Well, you can even see it in Fallout New Vegas. The Brotherhood of Steel has been brainwashed into thinking, you know, that there's their way is the only way, and that you know all pre-war technology belongs to them. They don't use it for anything good, though. I mean, they it, it's one thing to go out and collect that stuff; it's another to hoard it, and they've become hoarders. And if I believe the the canonical ending for Fallout 1 is that the Brotherhood of Steel went out and did good but you know with the things that they gathered but somewhere that got lost in translation and and now they become this obsessive information hoarding thing just like you know they look down on Lion's Brotherhood of Steel because they were trying to help people. And quite frankly, I really feel the Brotherhood of Steel should have gone the way of Lion and stayed with that, you know, let's help everybody try to survive in this wasteland and maybe we can build something. You know, on the East Coast, all they're doing is tearing themselves up. They've established no government. It doesn't look like there's any form of a government coming anytime soon. And while I don't think the NCR is the right way to go either because they're corrupt and dirty and just like, you know, I guess any politician, um, you know, but you know, the East coast hasn't even tried to do that other than the, what the failed attempts there at, um, Oh, when the synths came in and blew it up. I forget what it's called. Yeah, but it was uh, the not, oh, New Commonwealth Government or something like that. Something like that, yeah. yeah. But it's like, it doesn't feel like anybody is trying to really get together. I mean, yes, there's Diamond City, but it's very secular. You know, they're not helping anybody outside of Diamond City. And the same with Good Neighbor. They're just as guilty. I mean, how many times have you been to Good Neighbor and they're shooting people in the streets because, and claiming they're a scent? I think three times that I walked in there and they've shot somebody that 
they actually had a sense component on them. Most of the time they don't. And you can say, oh, well, that's the game saying, or just forgetting to add that component. I don't think so. I think it's just they shoot to shoot. Because I've so, got, I keep a box of sense components. Every time I come across the sense or, you know, somebody says they've killed them, I keep that sense component and I, I keep them added up. Hmm. Just to, you know, say, okay, you know, this person really was a sense. Even the ones that sneak into your settlements and start a fight there, you know, they've always had that sense component on them. Well, uh, you know, it's it's funny you, you say that. Um, everything that you've mentioned, um, it made me think of something. I'm gonna I'm gonna give you a two parter. Okay, uh, the first one is, I mean, in all the fallouts, really, just about every group has that racist aspect of it. You know, settlers don't want synths anywhere near them. They don't want ghouls anywhere near them. The Brotherhood, they don't want anybody that's impure in the Brotherhood. The Enclave, they're pretty much, the, you know, the same way. Mm -hmm. um, so, that being said, do you think that the Brotherhood, the Enclave, and really the Gunners, too, um, are pretty much all the same thing? They all have just about the same beliefs, but I think they're right, not the other. Well, because they all fail to see the bigger picture. You know, they're <sighs> most of the, most of the groups. You know, their biggest falling is their short sightedness. Look at um, the Brotherhood of Steel in Vegas. You know, they've they locked themselves down in a bunker, even though they knew it was killing them. Well, the the main people didn't, but you know, the leader. I forget his name. He did know that, you know, to live in that bunker was to die. Veronica knew it. She knew that if they didn't get out, that they were going to, you know, be wiped out of the Mojave. And the Gunners, you know, I don't, I don't really understand why the Gunners have popped up all of a sudden. I mean, I know like Oxhorn did a, a video on it and, but it's like they really just kind of came out of left field. Are they the remnants of the Gunrunners Arsenal people? Or, like, you know, was, are they, like, a branch off of them? Because I know they like to use, like, the higher-leveled weapons. and Because that's the only other, like, real reference we have in Fallout to any type of, like, gunner name. Um, I don't know. It's a good question. And... And I, I don't know. I I would have to say the Brotherhood and the Enclave are more. Well, similar. the Enclave was was thought that they were the only pure people left and wanted to wipe everybody out, or you know, spread the FEV virus to everybody to wipe them out. Wasn't that the whole point of Fallout Two, and why you had to sneak onto the ship and and kill them? I, I'm you know I can't really speak. From a lot of experience on that because I've never played one and two. Um, no, I, I've I've gone from three to Vegas to Fallout Four, so. But you know, I, yeah. I've tried to read up on the lore and stuff, and while I do not know it all, you know, I never will. I don't think anybody ever will. Um, and, and honestly, uh, you know, and that, that's the one thing I've said before. It's a shame that um, Bethesda could capitalize on that and put out lore. Uh, books, stuff to yes. read. Yes, absolutely. So, chat. Um, so some of the people in chat actually have some pretty good points. Um, you know, Mark points out that one of the things with the Brotherhood of Steel is that they hoard the technology because they don't trust anybody else to be able to use right. it properly. Right? They 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 feel like they're the only ones that are smart enough and righteous enough to you know use it for the right purposes which is to kill everybody except for humans <laughs> right and anybody but, um, opposes them but proctor quinlan also made a comment and i i don't remember like what part of the storyline he made this you know made the comment in but he said something about uh they had the reason he's sending you out there to collect the data 
is so they could destroy it. And I'm like, well, why would you? I understand that they want to keep it out of everybody's hands, but why do they not want to try and safeguard it or improve on it? Why just destroy it? That seems something like a an odd uh, statement to come from somebody within the Brotherhood. Because right. I thought that's what they were all about, was to hoard that technology away and not to destroy it, but to keep it out of everybody else's hands but their own. But they don't seem to use really a lot of what they find either. Right. So it's like, it's like they they want to find it just to make sure that nobody else gets it. Yes. Yeah. yeah. But they, 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 I think it was, was it Maxim that said it? Something like... Uh, or somebody, I think he said something about, uh, you know, basically we got to get this stuff because, um, you know, we already saw what everybody did with it last time, right? With all this technology yeah. and stuff. Yeah, right? I've heard that. I don't remember who said it, but it sounds like something Maxim would say. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I'm with you on the, the faction thing. Um, and I, I mean, compared to Fallout 3... Like, when I first started playing Fallout 4, and I'm like, oh, I'm probably going to be have to go with the Brotherhood. And, you know, then you actually meet up with them, and one of the first things they're like, oh, we need you to go to some farms and get us some food, and if they don't agree, just take it from them. You know, and you're just like, wait, what? No, um, that's not how that works, you know? And just a few things like that, and you're just like, uh, this isn't mm-hmm. the Brotherhood that I remember, so yeah, I no. guess I'm not going to be really siding with them. But I mean, I guess I, for me, I can justify the railroad taking out the Brotherhood or the Brotherhood taking out the railroad just because, in so many ways, they're kind of semi-mortal enemies. You know, just mm-hmm. for the fact that with the railroad wanting to save all the sense and and. You know, the Brotherhood always looks at him as some sort of an abomination, and anybody that helps him is, you know, this, you know, enemy that needs to die. So I can justify it in that regard, but that's probably why I always end up, you know, completing the game here every time I've done it recently is, you know, as the peaceful ending with the Minutemen. Yeah, I've never done the Minutemen ending. I'm trying, that's the character I'm using to build with right now. I'm trying to do the Minutemen ending. Just to say I've done that, and that will actually be like my final save, and I'll wipe all the you know games off my uh, out of my me- my uh, PS4's memory. But uh, I've never sided with them, and I've done the railroad like twice. I did the institute, and then I reloaded back to before you go get the brilliant agitator, and, and sided with the Brotherhood. Oh, really? Just because I did not want to play through, because I was so sick after two seeing the institute ending, it it made me feel so bad that I I almost quit playing. And then after wow. I did two, the Brotherhood of uh, Steel, and I finished it, I did not play the game for six months. I mean, I was so disgusted with, my, with myself for choosing them. It was weird. I've never it's, had that reaction of it with a game before. I was just gonna say, isn't it funny that a video game can actually hurt your moral compass. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah. That's no wonder that those two endings are the two that I haven't chosen yet. Um, I, I do have a playthrough that I'm kind of partway through, and I think that's going to end up being a Brotherhood playthrough just because I want to, you know, do it just to see the full story from the Brotherhood standpoint. Um, and then I still got to do an Institute one, which probably be my only female character and I'll I'll have to mentally in my mind she just has that you know mother bear kind of aspect to her and no matter what she's going to choose her her son you know type of thing so that's mentally that's where I'm I have to put myself because I'm with you I mean who in their right mind is going to choose the institute in the way, the way that they are like, yeah Ooh. well you know even as much as I like doing the railroad ending I don't like the railroad either because, you know, they're so focused on only saving sense people, not, they're not trying to help any of the the non-feral ghouls. They're not trying to help any like settlers who are, you know, being abused by raiders. 
it's only the synthetic people, you know, right. why is that okay? <clears throat> yeah, that's, uh, that's one of the reasons why I always kind of default to the Minutemen, just because same yeah, here. Doing, doing some of their missions is kind of annoying or whatever. And always having to go, but the good thing is with the you know after they patched it, you know you don't have pressing harassing you every time you talk to them about saving us another settlement. You know oh, you, you never you have know, to go do all that shit after a while, so that's always good. Preston never bothered me because I always took three of his quests and then I would go do them and just never turn them in until I was ready to do three more. Right, I exactly. never had a problem with Preston. <laughs> yeah, that's what I always end up doing. I was just like, okay, I'll just I'll go take get him taken care of and then I'll. Just sit on them for a while until I'm ready to do something else, you know? Yeah. yeah that's, that's why I've always picked the Minute Man, because it doesn't matter who you are. In in, in the in the Commonwealth Wasteland, the Minute Men are there to help you. They don't, they're not biased. Yeah. I mean, they don't like raiders for no. obvious reasons. And I don't think, you know, not many people do like raiders. I mean, it's every now and then you want to play like one, but... They are the only people that are willing, no matter, even though they have been betrayed by their own and the people who have helped them, they're still in the willing to reach their hand out and say, hey, mm-hmm. we're here to help you. Yeah, but, you know, that, uh, well, obviously it came back to bite them at Quincy because they right. got wiped out there pretty much. I mean, there's, Preston's the only one left by the time you meet him. And but is he though? I mean, if you think about it, right? He says he's the only one left. You, well, but yeah, you, you go. He all of a sudden he there's five more uh, Minutemen. By the time you go to see the castle, right? And then boom, and then that the, old lady pops up out of nowhere. Well, she comes back, yeah. And then uh, wasn't it the the lady at Egret Tours? Isn't wasn't she part of the Minutemen also? No, you convince her to. Oh, you that's right. You convince her. I knew there was something to do with it. Yeah, well, she yeah. thinks she's a Sith. I don't. Think yeah, she, she thinks. Was. She's, no, she's not. Right. I've killed her before, Chuck. <laughs> Just to make sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you can save it first. You know, no big deal. I did. I did. At least you eased her mind before you took her out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, um, uh, and I don't know how to pronounce it properly, but M Hawk. Uh, he had a question. Where was it? Uh, who do you go? Who'd you go with um, when you went to the Far Harbor? Who'd you side with? Oh, in Far Harbor, um, everybody. <laughs> yeah, I did the peaceful one for that. I did the peaceful one for that. I I Dima lived. Um, the children of Adam didn't get the nuke, but they they lived, except for uh, what's his name. Um, the high priest, whatever yeah. his name is. Hackness. Yeah. Right. Yeah, whatever his name is. I, it's been a while since I did Far Harbor. Um, I, I replaced him with the... Uh, the fake one. Yeah, with the fake. And then um, uh, I didn't uh, rat out Avery. It, you know, it doesn't Isn't seem it? right to rat her out because... No. She, she had nothing does to do so with much. It. Yeah. Yeah, I I didn't. E- I've not even watched anybody not go that way because I don't want to know. I don't want to know how bad you know it turns out being there if you if you try not to go the peaceful way. Right. Normally, I'm yeah. You know, I'm like out there. I want to find out all the information about like every quest after I've done it. That one, nope, don't care. So I'm you gonna know. take it that you took out all the raiders. Oh, at. Uh, Nuka World. Yeah. Yeah, I um, I keep the quests active, and I work with um, what's his name? Oh, God, I can't remember anybody's night. Gage. Gage. Yeah. yeah. Poor, poor Gage. I, the only reason I keep him though is because you have no quest markers if you wipe them out before you go and and repair. Or, you know, um, go through every single one of the areas there at Nuka World until you, you know, right before uh, he's like, oh, well, you know, you've cleaned everything up. Now let's assign those flags and 
go talk to this guy so you can go convert your settlements in the wasteland into raider encampments. So I'm like, yeah, no, not going to happen. Although I will say some of the hardest fights I've had in the game were trying to take out the pack. Oh, good Lord. By myself trying that, to take out the pack. Well, it's that, such a small area. It is. You know, you go in there and you're just like, holy crap. So many people around there. And yeah, it's not I, just people that attack you either. It's animals as well. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. I figured the best way to actually do it is to jump on top of that little concession stand there when you first come in. Up on that awning. And you're pretty safe there until um, Mason starts walking up the, the stadium bleachers to get to you. So if you oh. don't take him out first, if you get up there, that's the only way I was able to take him out. And then the operators are another problem because, uh, you know, you come in that door. If they're already hostile to you, they're going to wipe you out right there at the entryway. Oh, yeah, they have so many good points of advantage in that. Uh -huh. in that and I really thought yeah. they were going to be the, the easiest one to wipe out, so I left them for last. That was a big mistake. <laughs> I went with the Disciples first, and then I, I totally switched it up, reloaded back to before that. and um, I tried to take in all, diff all three of them out, you know, in different orders until I got them to where I could kill them all. Because I don't, I don't take any companions there. I only use Gage because I don't like. I don't want to corrupt my vanilla companions' minds with new girls. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, the well, one they, thing they mostly dislike everything you do anyway. Well, and the one thing that that kind of sucks too is when once you decide to go against the Raiders, you lose Porter Gage as a companion. I didn't want him anyways. I didn't well, like him. The the only thing that I don't like about that. I mean, I don't really care for the guy, but the only thing that, that sucks about that is you also lose his perk. So, um... Mm, I thought, you know, I think once you get it, you keep it, don't you? No, I think he's the only one that... Do you have to lose this? I think no. you lose... I'm pretty sure you lose it because um, on my first character, you know, I had it, and then I went back later, and I'm like, hey, I don't have that perk. So, um, on my first survival character... I made it a point to try to get there as early as I thought I could feasibly get to Nuka World because I wanted to go get his perk because you get extra XP for every time you kill kill and something else. Hmm. I can't remember. So it's like if you're, you know, I'm a I'm an XP whore and I love leveling up. So anything that I can do that's going to get me more experience, I'm going to do it, which means if that means, you know, getting Porter Gage early, so I can run around and, you know, milk an extra 5% in, of XP, then I'm going to do it. So I, I went and got him so I could run around and have his perk at least. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Well, you could, technically, you could get him and then uh, get his affinity up and then just leave him at Nuka World, leave and go, you know. That's what I did. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> as soon as I got his affinity up. In fact, uh, it was because of him that I actually had to load a mod so I could use the console command. Um, just so I could reset his affinity below a thousand because there's a glitch with him for all you crazy kids out there in TV land. If you didn't know this, there's a glitch with Porter Gage that if by chance you've reached, um, a thousand affinity with him, cause that's the maximum and when, where you get the final uh, thing in his perk. If you reach the affinity and if he tries to have the conversation, like right as you're zoning into a different area or you know, going through a load screen, mm -hmm. it glitches out and he'll never do the conversation ever again. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. So, um, I loaded a, a con, a thing so I could do a console command and, uh, I went and checked to see what his finny was. It was like at a thousand, 150 or something like that. And I'm like, I should have had the conversation by now. And so then, uh, I just had to reset it below a thousand and go do some stuff to get his affinity up. And then, you know, basically forced him to have the conversation so I could, I could do it. But yeah. Um, and then as soon as I did, I'm like, okay, bye. Um, I'm going to go back to doing my other stuff then. <laughs> like yeah. I'm done with you. Once I go to Nickel World, I never leave until I'm done. Because I don't want to have to be confronted by Preston and listen to his mouth about, oh, you're playing with the Raiders. Well, you know, no. I'm playing with the Raiders until I get what I want, and then I'm going to kill the Raiders. Just, you know, 
give me five minutes to breathe, Preston. <laughs> yeah, get off, get off my ass, Preston. That's pretty funny. But, yeah, no, I will not talk to Preston after I do it. So, and if there's some reason I have to. I always leave him at sanctuary. I never, even if I don't keep my main settlement there, um, I will never move him out of sanctuary because I don't want him in the settlement that I'm living at. Not because I don't like him or, you know, that he annoys me. It's just, I don't want to ever take that chance with, you know, before Nuka World of pissing him off. But then, you know, like after I'm done with the Nickel World, then I'm moving to wherever. But yeah. <laughs> I think that was just a stupid decision on Bethesda's part to have him hate what you're doing there in Nuka World. If they're going to, you know, they, I don't think they handled it right, I guess I, I'm trying to say. Um, because it's either you either kill the raiders and not work with them, or you're a raider and he hates you forever. But if you get that conversation with him about, you know, I don't like what you're doing there, I'm going to give you one more chance. He really doesn't, and he really never like really respects you. And it's like, well, you've made you've made this main character the general of the Minutemen why all of a sudden is the main person, your main supporter, not like you anymore. You know, it always kind of felt a little off to me. Right, yeah. Yeah, they could have done that one a little better, a little tie-in. Well, and I, and the whole idea that, you know, maybe their intention, you know, and, and in fact, I, I'm pretty sure this is the case. They pretty much admitted if anybody that's seen the, uh, was it No Clip or whatever mm -hmm. um, video, they, you know, they didn't realize what the settlement building was going to end up being. They threw it in and the last second was like, yeah, fuck it. Let's see what it does. Mm -hmm. But um, you go through the entire thing, getting all these settlements. And they you know, made it part of the mechanic of getting all these settlements. So you have all these settlements. And, you know, if you build up your settlements and then at basically at the end of the game, you know, even though the game can continue on doing whatever, but at the end of the game, you you just start sacrificing all those settlements to raiders. It's like, yeah, holy oh, shit, are you kidding me? It's like I went through a lot of work to do all that shit. You know, yeah, I microman, and this is the one thing I really dislike about Fallout Four. And while well, you can say, well, you don't have to do it this way, but I really feel like I have to micromanage my settlements. And when I load in a game, the first thing I do is I go to every settlement and I check every workbench. And I take out every bit of food and every bit of water from every settlement. I make sure everybody's got a good gun and armor on. And then I, if, when I leave the game, I do it all over again. And I feel like I spend 90% of my game time going from settlement to settlement, making sure, you know, what can I do to prevent a raider attack? And as long as I do that, my settlements rarely get attacked. While I was building Tappington, I'm like, I don't have time to stop and do this. So I'm just going to let it go and see what happens. I It took me two in-game weeks to build at Tappington. And my settlers got attacked every 15 minutes. The whole time, wow. I, and they either, in I have 120 defense at every single one of my settlements. It was like a 50-50 draw on whether they survived the attack or there was damage in the attack, whether they won or lost. I'm like, this is ridiculous. Yeah. And out of that two weeks, I think nine of those days, I had a rad storm. It is no fun to try to build when your whole entire sky is red because the green and the yellow, I, what it was about the rad storm green and our yellowish color and that the build border green combining together turned my sky red. It was weird. <laughs> but I just, I could not believe how many, the rad storms and the settlement attacks. I'm like, this is absolutely ridiculous. Has something changed? 
Well, your so RNG in, in was not helpful ones? to you, was it? No, and it's like, but it, it's so, you know, I've never really sat down and like counted because like I said, you know, I try to micromanage my settlements and it gets exhausting. And I, I was just finally to the point where I can't build and do this also. And something has to give. And, you know, I want the build more than I want to micromanage my settlers. Apparently, you know, like, apparently you've never... You've never watched my gearing my settlement video. <laughs> I go I out. Well, I go out and hunt down certain weapons and um, armor and everything. And I go through and I convert it. And I've got, I've got. I rename all the weapons. I rename all the armor. They all have very specific things that I load them up with. And um, I, I mod all that stuff. Rename it, paint it, everything, and give it to all my settlers. I'm like, all right, well, you do this one job, you wear that, and you do this other job, you do, you wear that. So, yeah, I, I know what you're talking about bad. there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I um, I harvest every piece of road leather and leather armor pieces. I don't know why I'm very partial to the road leathers, and I take. Them you like back what their I, butts look like in them? I don't know what it is, but. All my settlers would get when they come into my settlement. I'm ready for them. I've got road leathers and armor pieces that have been upgraded, and I have I keep every weapon I find. I break down the pipe pistols, and I don't care if they have a legendary weapon. You know they're a junkie because it's a junkie gun. I give them a couple of doses of psycho because I don't use it. You know I never use any of the drugs in right. in Fallout other than. Stim packs, great men tats, Radaway, Radex, and Radaway. That's it. I don't use any other drugs. I use mainly uh, the food items for healing and stim packs in an emergency. Right. I think about the only thing I do to my settlers is make sure they do not have anything that explodes. <laughs> because they are evil. It's like giving a child a nuclear weapon and saying, have at it. Yeah, I used to leave my fat man's in the uh, workbench, but then I accidentally stored uh, some mini nukes in there one time, and we got raided. And my settlers went and got the mini nuke out of the, or the the fat man out of the workbench and started shooting them and blew me up. I was pissed. <laughs> I I accidentally had one that was a uh, the shotgun with the exploding ammo. Mm hmm. And. Uh, I didn't know it, and I went to the slog to defend it. Accidentally blew up uh, Arlen and uh, um, killed him. <laughs> Luckily, I could use a console command, and I revived him, but he had no head. <laughs> I so, accidentally gave um, <clears throat> oh, it was Nick some Maltovs to store, and I went and I raided oh, a small yeah. uh, a small um, Bunker. Mm -hmm. And actually, you know, he's throwing them like fucking M and M's. Oh yeah, no, <laughs> I never Christ. give them anything other than the frag mines because they won't do anything with the frag mines. But Molotovs and uh, hand grenades are fair game with the your companions. I, I, I've uh, I've given them um, uh, the the um, cryo grenades. Sometimes I'll <laughs> give them that because then they'll just freeze the enemy, and it's that's all right. Yeah, like, oh, dog well, meat's the only one safe later. enough. <gasps> yeah, now I don't. Uh, I, I normally prefer to play vanilla. I don't. Uh, I think I was asking about mods, and I uh, I try not to play with mods at all. I'm not a big fan of them. Um, but the my Minuteman playthrough is a modded uh, playthrough, but it's the only one I've got, and I have very few mods on there. And while I am using a few mods to build with i'm trying to mainly use vanilla pieces as much as i can you can see that the tappington one but i am using a few of the modded pieces at uh coastal cottage so I know, uh, I, go ahead no i was just gonna say i i prefer the vanilla experience in a game more than a modded experience amen sister uh who's your favorite companion to have with you in my uh Myself. You don't like companions? I, I, I do like them, but they get in your way so much. 
that I'm constantly aggravated with them popping right up in front of you as I'm getting ready to shoot that I finally just quit taking them. As I was trying to build um, at Taffington, and I had Kate with me because I was trying to go do her affinity uh, class. And she kept getting walking in front of me in the kitchen. I was ready to shoot her. Because normally <laughs> she stands, you know, like on the other side of the settlement. But every time I went into the kitchen to work in there, she would walk back and forth as I was trying to place something. And I'm like, I finally got rid of her. But every I don't know. So McCready's often, not too bad. Every so often, I just take the when I'm building, I'll just take, have to take my companion over someplace. I'm like, stand here and stay. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And now, then you forget Fallout about them and you 3, go take off and they're not with you anymore. You're like, where the hell Kate go? Yeah. In Fallout 3, I don't use companions at all because the only companion I really like is Fox. And you don't get him till the end of the game. So I just choose not to use companions if I can't have him for the majority of the game. And But then, you know, it's also on a game-to-game -game basis. Like Mass Effect series, it's not Andromeda, but... The first three did a, a really good job with companions and keeping them out of your line of sight when you're trying to fire. Um, and there's a few other games out there that have done it too. But, you know, for the most part, they just get right in your way. Yeah. yeah. What's, uh, out of all the companions, I'm guessing you've done their stories and stuff. Mm -hmm. what, what companion story did you like the most? I actually liked McCready's. And I think a lot of that was because you get to meet him as a child, and now you're you're trying to help his child. And the um, the disease he's talking about is actually tied back into uh, Project Van Buren, the canceled Fallout game from uh, Obsidian, right? Or was it? Were they still in uh, Black Isle Studio then? I don't remember. But uh, oh, I had heard that. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I, I believe it ties back into there, and I believe the um, I don't remember where I read it or heard it, but I believe the um, the cure for the the blue boil. I forget what the, the disease is called that McCready's son has. It was um, actually a pre-war thing. And the cure, while they were working on the cure, that's how they accidentally stumbled on the FEV. And that's so that's where FEV came from, was in the process of making the cure for this blue boil disease. So is there a certain... Um storyline in any of the fallouts that you like really really affected you or like in, like made you really sad or like you really oh uh, actually it wasn't a storyline that was, it was this little building in fallout 3 and i go to it every time and, and i i never remember where it's at i always stumble across it it's an unmarked house and you can go in and you can walk over to the terminal and you can send the robot upstairs to tell bedtime story to the little kid and it gets me every time and i will send that guy up there three or four times until i absolutely have tears pouring down my face because it reminds me of reading bedtime stories to my kids when they were little oh, i was well. just gonna say is that because you're a parent yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely yeah. but it, you know. it gets me every time because i think oh my god what would i do if my children were dead and i was left alone in the apocalypse without them yeah, you know, I, I'm a big softie at heart, too, and stuff like that gets me. Um, I can't remember where it is, and I can't remember what fallout it is. Um, but there is a point where uh, you go into this house, and um, I, f I really forget the whole gist of it, but um, somebody drowned their kid in a sink. And it shows sneakers popping out of the sink and a baby carriage next to it. And I'm like, uh, oh, my God, that is horrific. Man, I don't remember that. I, duh, God, I don't remember that one either. Because that would be enough to it, really piss me off. Yeah. It, like, some of the fallout, fallout gets really, yeah. 
some of the follow stuff gets really dark, and I really wish I could remember which one it was. Uh, it's, that's got to be it, probably New oh. Vegas because Bethesda does a pretty good job of like they don't show kids skeletons and Mm-mm. stuff like that. Well, no, even but the, they do insinuate. Yeah, well, in in Fallout Three, they do have shrunken down skeletons that are there to simulate children. Right. But they mainly do their their children's storytelling through like um, the toys, or if like if it was a crippled child, they'll they'll be a medical brace there. And, right. Um, that's normally how they do deal with their you know like their kids, but. I don't know. I don't know. I also what thought um, the chick from the disciples, like her story, was pretty fucked up. But yeah, she oh, would like yeah. just yeah. entice people mm-hmm. and pretend to be nice, and then just murder them for fun and and yeah. record while she's well, doing Arlen, it. Arlen Glass, if you go and you get his daughter's hollow tape and give it to her, that's to pretty heart wrenching. I don't care who you are. If you're not sad about that, you're just a cold-hearted, you know what? <laughs> right? Yeah. You know, cause that's... That, that, that's, that's, to me, that is probably the absolute best story in the entire Fallout 4. Without and a doubt, honestly, that whole story just, if, like you said, if that doesn't get to you, then nothing will. Yeah, I actually, I'm really hoping that they take the feeling that they gave off with that quest and put it on hollow tapes in Fallout 76 for us to stumble across. Could you, could you imagine listening to that story with nobody around you, but you're walking down a hallway and all you hear are the echo of your footsteps and this sad voice telling you about, you know, their dead daughter or whatever. I mean, they have the potential to do a, a fabulous job on the story in 76. It's just all, can they, can they carry through on it? Right, but that you know, when they said there were no NPCs, my my immediate thought was, oh my God, we're going to have twenty five thousand hollow tapes with Arlen Glass stories on it. You're like, oh the you know, or um, what was that uh, family in Fallout Three where you you have to find like there there's four or five hollow tapes scattered all over the place, and once you get them all, you can get into their secret bunker. That is full of weapons and stuff. I don't remember their names, but they were, you know, like, oh, I hope you're safe. You know, I can see the bombs falling on a lot mm. of them. And, and, you know, it's like every time you find it, you know, because each person's leaving a message for another one of the family, but you've already found that person's holotape. So, you know, they're already dead. You know, right. that, that was a really well done quest. I mean, like, I don't know. Bethesda has moments of brilliance with their their storytelling like that. I wish they could carry it over to the main quest. And that's not just in Fallout. That's in Elder Scrolls also. Right. Uh, Theris uh, lets us know that uh, the story, the place I'm talking about, is actually in Fallout 4. It's in one of the subway stations. And Kat says, hmm. the Keller family tapes is the one you're talking about. Keller, yeah. Them. That's them. Um, JPIC wants to know what game other than 76 that's coming out soon are you really looking forward to? Oh, I'm actually looking forward to The Call of Cthulhu. It comes out on the 30th of the month. I plan on, I'm pretty pretty sure I'm going to uh, either live stream it or I'm going to do a Let's Play of it and post it on my channel. Um, I'll play it when the servers are down on Fallout 76 during the beta. And I think it's a 10 to 15 hour game is what I seem to be able to find on it. Um, so I should be able to have that done by November 14th. Um, Thronebreaker, The Witcher Tales is coming out on October 23rd. I don't know if I'll get that right at launch. I may wait a couple of months on that one, but it's a, um, from CD Projekt Red, and while it's based in the uh, the Witcher world, and I believe Geralt is part of it, it's more an RPG with Gwent-focused combat. So it's kind of a little weird on the way they described it. I may watch some gameplay on that before I 
totally commit to it. And then in March, there's another game coming out called The Sinking City. Very um, kind of like on the Call of Cthulhu, very Lovecraftian mythos type uh, stuff going on with that one. So, and then of course Cyberpunk 2077 and Starfield, and whenever the Elder Scroll Six comes out. But no Red Dead for me. It's not really my kind of mind of game. You know, it's like I like westerns, but I don't want to play westerns. I love western stories. <laughs> um, getting back to uh, stories and stuff like that. Um, I know one of my favorite stories that I that Bethesda just kind of leaves you hanging on is uh, in one of the sewers. There's this uh, serial killer who's leaving skeletons all around in um, in type of ways that he killed them, and he's leaving hollow tapes. Oh, um, the um, oh yeah, the thin sewer guy. The yeah, guy right. in the sewer. yeah. <laughs> is there um, a story that in Fallout Four where Bethesda's leaving hang, you hanging that just like really kind of you wish they would have elaborated more on. I wish they had done more with Pikmin. I wish there had been like, you know, after you finish the quest, I kind of wish you could like find, you know, every once in a while you would like find a painting here or there it's like because i know with um um arlen glass after he leaves every once in a while if you go around the sinkhole you will find a completed um giddy up buttercup and if you take it and then come back in a couple of weeks like two three weeks you will find another one so they did something with him but I was really kind of hoping they would do more with Pikmin. Well, one of the things they do with Pikmin, I don't know if it's after you do the mission. Um, I'd have to check on my my character that I use for the evolution challenge. Um, one of the things that they do with him is you'll run across um, a random group of dead raiders. And they'll be, oh, with, have with, his calling card. With his calling card on them. Yeah. Yeah, so that's pretty cool. Yeah, I've but I've seen those before. I've done the quest also. Yeah, because yeah. instead of getting the quest from Hancock, I actually uh, I got it from uh, stumbling across a, a group of dead raiders. And uh, every once in a while, I find um, oh the guy at the um, the preps preparatory school, the East Boston Preparatory yeah. School, Zeller. Yeah, is that his Zeller. name? Uh huh. Yeah, um, every once in a while I'll find raiders that have his uh, blood contract on them. Oh, okay, yeah. That's pretty cool that they at least, you know, it kind of, mm-hmm. it brings it, it brings it all together, but it doesn't, like, shrink the universe, you know, type of thing, you know. Mm-hmm. It, it just strengthens the whole thing. Yeah. I don't know, I mean... You know, you can always say, well, there's a lot more they could have done. But then in a lot of ways, the things that they did do were just right also. You know, especially like with the Arlen Glass. Gets me every time. I don't know why I'm drawing a blank on Arlen Glass. He's He's at the slog. The super mutant, or not the super mutant, but the the ghoul at the slog with the buttercups. Yeah, he's yeah, the original okay. creator of the Giddy Up Buttercup. Yeah. Um, um, I had a question and I forgot. I'll think about a boomerang and see if it'll come back to me. <laughs> good night, kid, Joe. Thanks for coming in. Later, Shell. Have a good one, buddy. Thanks for coming in. Um, Thank you, JPEG. I'm trying to remember. Mine went blank. <laughs> I had it up until you went, I don't know who Arlen Glass is. And I went, <laughs> ding, memory's gone. Um, 
All right, I'll go to one of my my tried and true ones until I can remember what that one was. That was a fall, I think it was a Fallout question, but um, oh no, it was kind of a general gaming question. Um, kind of, uh, I guess, except for those games where you're forced into a certain character type or player type. What kind of like builds do you do for your characters? Is there a default type or are you uh, a sniper, a melee, a sneaky, assassin type? You know, what's your it, what's your default one? It really doesn't matter what I end up, you know, what I start out doing. What I end up being is a sneaky thief assassin that likes to either use bows or sniper weapons. It, it never fails. Like Skyrim, I, I set out to be a melee character. I ended up with a as a bow stealing thief, you know. <laughs> It, I, it's, I don't know. It's just some. It's the, the build I kind of prefer. I think I like to be able to sneak around and get the drop on people. Or yeah, I'm kind of the same way. I'm either a a, a, a sneaky person or I'm a gun ho. Yeah, I like, a I, Jenkins type of person. You know. Yeah, I don't like melee. I've I've never liked using melee in 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 games unless I've been forced to. So it's like I deliberately set out to make a melee character, and I still couldn't stick with it. It's like that's why I'm so excited to see the crossbow come into seventy six. Because I, I mean, of any of the games, West Virginia is the place to have it. Because I mean, that's a huge hunting community there. I tell you. I mean, when I went to school there, the whole week of Thanksgiving, hunting season, you never either, never saw a guy in school during hunting oh, season. Hunting. So they just gave us the whole week off. <laughs> you know? But yeah, I mean, because you got bow season, then you got guns. Oh, but, that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, for more of a generic gaming question. What's your favorite genre, game genre? Oh, um, I don't have a favorite, honestly, because, you know, I, I play RPGs, but my daughter talked me into playing Pokemon, Sun and Moon, and ever since then, I've played all the Pokemons back to the last, uh, the earliest one I played was Pokemon Yellow, I think it's called. The one with Pikachu. I don't know. Um, you love Pokemon Go, don't you? I do not. I do not even want Pokemon Go. <laughs> so my daughter has it. I don't. And I'm not getting the Let's Go Eevee, Let's Go Pikachu thing coming out. Or is that? I don't even I don't know when it's coming. But um, I played them. But And then I like Harvest Moon. You know, like playing farming simulators. I can get lost for hours in Stardew Valley. And then turn around and feel like being a mage. So I load up Oblivion okay. or Morrowind or Dragon's Dogma where I can just run around and kill dragons. <laughs> it, it, it's, it all depends on what I feel like being that day. And like um, most of the time through the summer when I, Draco was playing State of Decay 2, I was playing Graveyard Keeper or The Witcher, you know, because I don't play zombie games. They don't interest me. And I think some, oh, yeah, Jake, if you asked about Assassin's Creed, the only Assassin's Creed I played was the very first one. And while I enjoyed it, it wasn't something I ever wanted to play again and had no interest in playing any of the others. Uh oh. I th did you hear that? It's, that was the set of JPEGs heartbreaking. I'm sorry. I know. I, I got the very strong impression that you are a huge Assassin's Creed lover. But uh, no, I, I, I think they pushed them out too quickly. You know, and I, didn't, as uh, much as I'm an Assassin's Creed fan, I'm going to agree with you on, on that. There's a couple of them they just pushed out way too quick. If they had really refined it and really thought about where they wanted the, the storyline to go, other than just having a general direction, I think it would have been, been 
been able to hold my interest longer. And you know, it's like, I like Zelda. I got bored with the Breath of the Wild, and Mark probably just rolled over in his grave, too, because I know he loves the Breath of the Wild, but I got bored with it about halfway through and never went and killed Ganon. And it's a beautiful game. Well, There's a lot of stuff I game. love about it, but I don't know. It couldn't hold my interest the whole way through. Yet I can sit there and farm turnips for hours. It, I know it makes no sense, but... I don't know. There's some games that can keep my attention all the way through it, and then others, they lose me halfway through. And some of them I will go back and finish and play and and may even end up liking. Like, Eternal Darkness was like that for me. I played, like, the first hour of it and decided, you know, I don't think this is my kind of game, and then went back a year later and played it through four times and absolutely loved the game. It's one of the most underrated games out there for the GameCube. Mm. All right, so ha- having said that, if you were to ever build a game, and somebody just came up and said, "We need you to design a game," mm-hmm. what would the game be? Both play type, um, the environment, um, you know, all that kind of fun stuff. Describe your game to us. Sell it to us as if. We were getting ready to go buy a game. We had to choose yours or somebody else's. It would honestly have to be an open world RPG. Where with a heavy, heavy, heavy emphasis on exploration. No quest markers. You have to, you know, for your quest, you have to question the people and get as much information out of your quest giver and the surrounding people they give them you know have you go talk to to get the location of where you need to go you know no reliance on a quest marker you have to figure it out yourself kind of like they did in Morrowind you know here's your directions go find it um and you know no fast travel actually or very limited fast travel kind of the way they did it in Dragon's Dogma you have to find a crystal And wherever you plant your crystal at, you can fast travel there. But they only give you five uh, crystals in a playthrough. That, of course, that's there. And then there's two uh, um, areas that you can always fast travel to. You know, so you have a limited fast travel system forcing you again to go and explore. Right. You know, it's got to be a big main kind of quest that has meaning and consequences you know and then when you do finish the quest I don't want the game to feel over and I want people to come up to you and say you know oh thank you for you know saving us or you know make it a I don't want the people to be you know ignore the fact that you've done something for the world Uh, play style Pretty much whatever, you know, if it, I would like it more to not be quite fantasy, but not real world either. Somewhere kind of between a cross between uh, more, or not more one, but the Elder Scrolls type game, Dragon Age, that kind of fantasy life versus the Mass Effect um, Fallout kind of universe, that kind of a feel. Right. And then, you know, maybe there is magic and guns and swords and, um, you know, but you have to build your own weapons. I'm not, you know, I don't want you to, you know, hand me a weapon. I want to work for that weapon. You know, maybe give me my first little pea shooter, but, you know, make me work for it. Video games don't make us work for it half the time anymore. It's just handed to us. Right. Just like, you know, I think we were we were talking about quest markers and JPEG Stream today, and I really think that, you know, games rely too much on the quest marker system. You know, it's not just, here's the marker, here's your location where you need to go. You get there and it's saying, here's your item, you need to pick this up and take it back to, you know, quest marker over here, and it's pointing right at that person. 
you know, the games don't give us that leeway to say, you know, what am I supposed to be looking for and, you know, where am I going to find it? Right, of exactly. course, he did have a, a, a quest where he was trying to find a bowl of olives, I think it was, and he couldn't find it. And there was no quest marker for it. And I know it was frustrating for him, and I know he didn't find it. And, you know, I wonder how much of it is the note wasn't quite as specific as it needed to be. Or if, again, it was it's our over-reliance on that quest marker. And when we don't have that, and I, I've watched other people, not just JPEG, other people playing games. You know, if they don't have that quest marker, they can't do it. And I'm like, you know, video games should not hold our hand. They should give us the tools we need. Here's your world. Go explore. Right. Yeah. I don't use a video game to enhance, you know, to um, be my life. You know, I use it to escape my life. You right. know what I mean? Well, and so many times, too, that, um, they've, you know, you talked about playing games on your phone. You know, most of those are going to be kind of like time wasters and, you know, that kind of stuff. Right. But it's just something just to kind of occupy yourself while you're, you know, waiting on something or whatever. But that's what a lot of games with the quest markers and everything is like, you know, go here, turn left, follow that marker until you get to it and then turn right. You know, basically what it's doing, you know, and it's just like follow these instructions. You don't even have to think. Just go along and, you know, time, time your trigger pulls at the right time, you know, type of thing. And uh, I'm I'm with you. I, I miss uh, I miss the the time when you actually had to really think through things and figure stuff mm -hmm. out, you know. And and uh, that was always good. Yeah, it's like I got really excited about playing uh, Detroit Become Human, and then I got it, and I still haven't played it. My daughter's played it and loves it, but I haven't played it because it's like it feels like it's mainly quick time events. And it's like, I have no problem with story-focused games. I like them. But it's nothing but, like, quick time event after quick time event. And it kind of takes the fun out of the game when it's just that. Yeah. yeah also, definitely. you know, it's, I'm, I understand that's the game choice. Um, but I don't know. I believe that's how the, uh, the Telltale series uh, works, too. Yeah, I I I don't play episodic games. You know, I want my game all at once. I or if I do like Life is Strange, I um I bought it. I still haven't had a chance to sit down and play it yet. But I would where you go take pictures, right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and you can what change is that? Life is Strange. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the sequels out now I think but it's like I'll you know if I'm good if it's an episodic game I'll wait till it's all I've got the whole thing instead of waiting until from chapter to chapter yeah I um I actually downloaded Hitman the newest Hitman uh season one for uh Xbox and uh, mm -hmm. I was very disappointed it was only like a 15 minute mission and then boom it's done mm -hmm. yeah yeah, it's like you have, if you're going to do an episodic thing, you have to have the right balance. Right. Just, you know, the same as with the storytelling, you know, where are you going to leave it off? You know, is it really going to work? Can you follow through from chapter one to chapter five? Or however many chapters you're going to end up having. So Mark thinks that, Mark Jackson thinks that uh, you'd like the council. I've looked into the council and I almost bought it. Um, again, it's a uh, chapter kind of thing. So I don't know if the whole game's out yet. All five chapters or however, however many chapters they were doing are out. I still might get it. I don't know. Now, I, I, I've asked this on the last show. There has been a series of games that have become movies. Um, mm -hmm. What I'm hoping that they will do soon is uh, Dead Space. I hope they make that into a movie or Fallout. Um, is there a, a game that you would like to see become a movie? 
if they could pull it off, I would love to see Mass Effect become a movie with female Shepard, not the male Shepard. Interesting. Who would you have play it? It'd have to be somebody with red hair. <laughs> well, you know, you I, know, like I don't know. I'm I'm partial to a redheaded shepherd, so I it, you know it, it really doesn't matter as long as it's you know she's got to be you know badass. I guess you would say. Is there a video game movie that you've watched that uh, disappointed you? Uh, all of them. Really? Doom was ex- Doom was especially bad. Oh yeah. Although I like um, the Resident Evil movies, even though I think they're horrible, I still like them. I liked the beginning ones, but I mm-hmm. think they veered way yeah. the fuck off course. Waiting for them. the ship or going to the ship? Yeah, it's a little strange. Uh, let's see. Any uh, questions from uh, the peanut gallery? Yeah, right. Plasma's uh, Plasma's got a question. Um, do you do any horror games? No, because <laughs> no. <laughs> but I am going to do Call of Cthulhu, and it's it's a um, a psychological horror game, which I do like. Cause that was what Eternal Darkness was. It was a psychological horror game. But uh, I tried playing Alien Isolation. I made it about 45 minutes in. I think the alien was getting ready to show up and I shipped out. <laughs> Pain your, your, your pants and called it a night, huh? That was, was Mark's like, heartbreaking right there. I, I'm like, you know, people, there is something on the ship that I don't want to see. My bus is leaving. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. You know, I know when the the heck to get you know get the heck out of Dodge. You know, it's not my damn fault these video game developers can't get this out quicker. But no, to, no, I I really don't. I don't play zombie games either. I like I like horror games, but I am uh, so over the survival horror games. Yeah, I don't mind a hard game. I just. I like horror movies. I like being scared by a horror movie. I just don't like being scared in a video game, I guess. But I just, you know, Oblivion had a few places that, you know, creeped me out a little bit. Or And follow the Dunwich Boars building. Oh, my God, I hate that thing. Oh, yeah. And There's the actually, only reason uh... I go... The only reason I go in that building is one to destroy the book after I go to um, point point uh, lookout, and two because I need that bobblehead in there to complete my collection. Only reason you're gonna get me in that building. No, there's actually a speculation that there might be more on the Dunwich Board uh, stuff uh, in '76. Oh, if they do not turn the Trans Allegheny file to a Dunwich Board type building, I will be disappointed. Because that's the building I want to see get the Dunwich twist. Although I have a feeling it may be Moundsville. But I, I think it's become a staple. I mean, they did it the first time I went into the, the Dunwich quarry. I did not know what to expect, and I did not expect what happened down there. I thought I was going, my game was glitched when oh, I first that was went so in. Great. And that was a thumbs up, me. Bethesda. You know. I don't mind like little scares like that in a game, but I do not need to go through a whole entire game. It's like Dead Space. I won't play Dead Space. Oh, that's such a fun game. And, my and there, there's a lot of jump scares. Yeah, there are. And my daughter's like, I know where every necromage is. I'm like, doesn't matter. I don't care. I ain't playing. <laughs> yeah, see, I, I, I don't like anything horror. I'm not a horror anything fan. I don't. I don't. Uh... Don't watch horror movies. It's not my cup of tea. Yeah. Probably got ruined back when I was like five or six and watched uh, The Exorcist and had nightmares for a week. I mean, I don't get like particularly super scared anytime I've watched a horror since then. 
But I don't, know. I just I don't get into them, and I'm definitely Most not, of them are just definitely not gonna. Yeah, well, I'm definitely not gonna do of any video games. You know, for horror video games, it's just not even close to my cup of tea. But yeah, no, I'd I, rather I'd rather laugh or you know, uh, uh, you know that kind of stuff. I um, love horror movies, especially if they're done well. And I think I actually I owe that uh, as much as I hate to admit this to my mother. Um, I was really really scared of Pet Cemetery as a kid. Uh, that movie just creeped me the fuck out, especially oh. when that the part when that little kid slices the guy's heel. Yep. Um, the kid was creepy. They yeah. did a good job with that kid. Yeah, I agree uh, with that. So one night, my mother turned around to me and said, "You know what really is scaring you is just the sound." And she made me watch the movie with no sound on whatsoever. And I was like, "Really? This is scary." Mm-hmm. And ever since then, I just loved horror movies. Yeah, I've always been a big fan of horror movies. I'm really excited for the new uh, Halloween. Hmm. So Mark Jackson would like a recap of the games other than 76 that you're looking forward to. He wasn't here for um, uh, The Call of Cthulhu and The Sinking City in March and possibly Thronebreaker, The Witcher Tales. And then, obviously, you know, um, Cyberpunk 2077 and Starfield and The Elder Scrolls Six, And those are just the ones that have been announced, you know. And I've actually been looking into, there's a little indie game on Steam called Adam. I think it's called. It's kind of a Russian-style Fallout type game it's still in like the alpha or beta but i hear it's coming along pretty well because i do play a lot of indie what do you think about these other follow uh, mods that are coming out like, i mean um, i am actually tempted to try playing new cal the new california mod um Fallout Miami, I don't play Fallout 4 on PC. I play it on my Xbox. So I, or not Xbox, but PS4. So I know it won't come to that. And I I think it's very creative what they're doing with it. And I'll be happy to watch gameplay of it, but not something I really am interested in playing myself. Although I do love the ghouls with the little floaties around their waist. <laughs> So, is there a? I think I don't know if we asked you this already. Is there a game that you uh, just fall back on that you you know you play the hell out of? Um, not really. It's more like whatever I feel like playing at the time. Like right now. I'm playing a playthrough of Morrowind, and I haven't played Morrowind since um, I picked it up whenever Oblivion launched. I didn't. I was late to Morrowind. I didn't play it until um, Oblivion actually came out, um, and I played it then. But then I didn't play it again. And I, I remember I loved the game, but I couldn't remember any of the storyline or anything. Until, you know, I started uh, playing it and like little things would come back to me. And it was like, it felt like I'd come home when I picked that game up. It was really weird. And then the first time I went to sleep to level up in the game, I couldn't figure out why I was jumping up and on the bed, backing up into the corner and getting my weapon out. Because it's like I do that in all my games, and then I got attacked by the Dark Brotherhood, and then I remembered it's like, oh yeah, more in wind is why I never sleep with my back to the door, and <laughs> I, you know, I'm always sleeping on top of the bed, and I have to make sure the bed's in a corner. <laughs> I do it in Fallout Four too. If any That's game I can hop on that bed, is where I'm at. But. um I don't know. I'm also playing a playthrough of Oblivion right now, too. And uh, I finished up Fallout 3. I'm working in Fallout 4. 
I'm trying to finish up The Witcher 3, which I'm playing for the first time this summer. Um, I still have the last DLC to do. I want to get it done before 76 comes out. Um, I'm playing an indie game called Graveyard Keeper. I uh, forget what else I've got going. I'm still playing on Stardew Valley. And a few others. Oh, I gotta finish my Dragon Age. Finished it once on the PS3, but then I went and got it for the PS4. It started playing through it and haven't finished it yet. It's another one. I like it, but I got bored with it after like the second time through. You and find yourself doing that a lot, like playing games I, over and over? I do. I The first Mass Effect, I played it five times in a row. I picked it up, played it all the way through 100%, turned around right after I finished beating it, and started all over again and did it 100% five times in a row. I will play a game until I'm utterly sick of it. If Are it's you a completionist? Game. I am. I don't have... the. Mass Effect Andromeda pissed me off so bad because I, while I didn't hate the game as much as everybody did, I got to the end and only completed 97% and realized I did not ever want to play this game again, but I didn't get that 100% and it pissed me off. <laughs> and normally I don't have that kind of a feeling, you know, it's like if I miss something, Okay, well, I'll go and play the game through again. But I, I couldn't do it with Andromeda. It's like, okay, I played it. I've said I've played it. I'm done. You know, how bad is that? And I've never played any of the Mass Effect games. So, But from everything I've heard, the first three games, everybody loved them. Like, you know, it was almost like a cult following for them. Mm -hmm. And then Andromeda come out. And I have not heard anyone that played that game that had anything... Like, like more than just casual positive. Like, mm -hmm. no, you don't hear anybody just like, I think it was such a great game. You know, there's like nobody gushes over it, right? No. It, in fact, it's almost always everyone talks about how disappointed or annoyed or much they hated or, you know, something mm -hmm. like that. It's never, you know, the other way. And that's just, you know, kind of takes me to my next question. Um, What's your thoughts on EA and some of the decisions they've been making as a as a company on any and all of their games to include, you know, all of their their subsidiaries, you know, BioWare and you know all of them. The only games that I buy that EA has their gritty little fingers on come from Bioware, and that is Dragon Age and Mass Effect. And if Bioware keeps going the way they're going with Anthem, I don't think there will be a Bioware 4 or, 5 or 4 and a Mass Effect whatever, Mass Effect 5. So, you know. Yeah, I think they're, they're you know, EA, they're, they're the ones that's got the Star Wars, uh, uh, basically contract, know. you know, and, you know, I'm a huge Star Wars fan and, um, they, I would probably still to this day be playing Star Wars, the old Republic, had they not screwed up that game so bad, you know, and, uh, um, but they just flat out screwed it up and then, you know, they bring out Battlefront and Battlefront 2 and screwed both of them up. They had, a, mm -hmm. you know, that was a, something that everybody was looking forward to and then everybody's just kind of like. Is that it? You know, like, what? yeah. And then they do we, the loot crates and all that shit, and you yeah, know, talk about I, pissing people off. I actually just watched a, a video on that. It's funny you say that. Um, they are completely revamping that game a little bit at a time. They totally dis did, did away with the uh, loot crates. Um, now you have to play as a character to level them up and the characters are now almost free to play so they're getting a little better but i agree with you they freaking destroyed 
that um, game franchise. Yeah. I, we have the first one, but only because it came with our PS4. My daughter loaded it up, looked at it, and she's like, Mom, this sucks. I'm like, well, don't play it. <laughs> you know, that's easily solved. But it is sad. And I, I heard what happened with the second one. And, you know, like, the pay-to-win thing with them. And, and now you've got countries like Belgium that are banning loot boxes. And I like, right. really, it's come to this. You know, EA can't police themselves. And what was the comment the guy made about, um, oh, what's the new one coming out? Where, with the girl with the prosthetic arm in World War II and everybody's up in arms about that one. Battlefront, uh, is that, that what one. it's called? Not Battlefront. Um Oh, I don't know. I don't. I don't play war games. Um, Is it Battlefield? Battlefield, maybe. But there, I know they're all up in arms about that. But the guy was like, "Well, you know, buy our game or don't." Well, that guy doesn't work for that company anymore since he said that. Right. Exactly. And I don't know if he was fired or if he chose to quit. They've never like gone into that kind of detail on it. But you know. How was that a way to advertise your company? And even at E3, they weren't advertising to the consumer. They were advertising to their investors. Well, they pretty much had to because their investors were so pissed off. But if you don't make the consumers happy, it doesn't matter what your investors are happy with. That's right. I think the same thing happened with uh, BioWare. They're the ones that made um, uh, Badlands, I think. Um, one of their devs uh, got caught on Twitter, like uh, yeah. saying that people were bashing her because she was female and everything else, and she was pretty much telling everybody to "fuck off." Mm-hmm. You know, she was using some nasty language and talking bad about uh, their consumers, and they went, "You know what? Fine, you're fired." A guy, another guy, came up to st- uh, in the company, stuck up for her, and they went, "Okay, you're gone too." Yeah. Yeah. I, it, it's pretty sad that these companies just want to put shit out there and make money and not care about who's buying it or not. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, I agree. The, for the most part, I mean, that's what they're that's what they're there for. They're to, to make money. But the problem is that they they get to the point where they just feel like they can put anything out there and just make money off of it, and they're perfectly happy with that. And it's the consumer's fault to con- that they continue buying their crap. You know, if, right. if the consumers would say, well, just because, you know, at some point they made a game a few years ago that I really liked, just because that happened doesn't mean I have to buy any, of their, any more of their own, well, you know, any more of their crap. People so. don't realize that development teams change from game to game. The team that made Mass Effect 1 is not the same team that made Mass Effect 2. And you can tell because there are subtle differences. Right. And, you know, we're not going to even talk about the ending to 3 because that was just crap. But, you know, the Mass Effect 3 team is not going to be the one that makes Mass Effect 5. That Bioware is no more and we'll never see it again because EA is pretty much destroyed what Bioware used to be. Now, do you think that's part of the problems with uh, I do. sequels yeah. and video games, that it's different teams, that it maybe is. it should be the same team? It is. Because... The team that wrote the main quest line in Morrowind was not the team that worked on Oblivion. And you can tell that the main quest line in Oblivion is not quite as good. And then you get to Skyrim, I don't even know what that fiasco was of a main quest in Skyrim. It made no sense, and it was horrible. I know a lot of people won't agree with me on that, because, you know, like, everybody's, all oh, Skyrim is a good game, and they put it on everything but your toaster, but, you know, it's a good game because it of the exploration and the dungeons, but not the quest or the storyline. Hey, and is, that begs the argument, what's more important in a game? The storyline or the gameplay 
or sh- but shouldn't it be a combination of both? Mm. Right. Yep. The Where's that balance? Eggs. If you don't have that fine balance, just like with Vampire, they tried to tell a story focused game, but they left a lot of the story in notes scattered throughout the the city. But if you don't find all those notes, then you miss bits and pieces of that quest line or of that that part of the story. You know, that's poor storytelling on the, the development team's part. You know, if you're making a story focused game, then give the story. Don't try to hide it different places. The same with, you know, a, a game that is, you know, uh, combat focused. If it's only combat focused like Fortnite, don't try and fl- throw a uh, story into it all of a sudden. It's not going to be- make any sense. You're going to end up with a convoluted game that goes nowhere. So would you rather your storyline be linear? Or- no, I don't want a linear story. I want to be able to, you know, make mistakes and screw up my path and, and maybe get a bad ending. You know, if I accidentally killed the wrong person. In Morrowind, you can kill absolutely everybody and lock yourself out of the main quest. And the game makes no apologies about it. It will give you a warning. You have gone down the wrong path. And if you want to, you know, you can reload your save. You can kill Caius Cassades as soon as you see him. And you will get that warning. You can still finish the main quest. But you have to kind of just go off the rails and, and not... Um, do the majority of it. But games don't give you that anymore. People are marked essential now. You can't kill Kellogg until it's time to kill Kellogg. Right. You can't even get into Fort Hagen until it's time to get into Fort Hagen. I've tried. So you think you should be able to, like, hey, the minute Preston uh, gives you that one uh, annoying message of uh, a settlement needs to be helped, you can just blow his head off and say, nope, don't want to. Well, that should be your choice. But if you choose not to go help that settlement, then there should be a consequence. You should get kicked out of the Minutemen. They should take your general badge away from you. Makes but they sense. don't. They just say, oh, no, yep, yeah, here, there's another settlement. They need your help. Because you sometimes you can't get to them fast enough. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, I know. But um, games just don't do that. They don't give you. You know, it's all back to that hand. Yeah. And it's like, no, I don't want a... I don't think all games should be like hardcore, you know, die hard, let's go rah-rah, kill everybody. You know, no, I like a game that's story-focused, or story focused, but make it make sense and, and, you know, make it to where it's either through dialogue or set storytelling, but don't make me go out of my way to try to find story pieces in a notebook that I'm still likely to miss, even though I'm going to look for everything in a video game because I put $60 down for it. I want to experience everything that game has to offer, no matter how many times I play through it. You know, I, I kept going for all the little, um, uh, flags in Mass Effect, even though I didn't have to every time. Just because I knew that I didn't get them all in one playthrough, and I chose to load that playthrough in another game, I was going to have consequences for not getting them. But games don't do that that much anymore. So, in the line of saying what you're just saying, 76, yeah, I I got you, Mark. Uh, 76 is going to be like that. There are no live NPCs besides robots and bad guys. Mm -hmm. Um, Animals. Mm -hmm. Every quest is going to be a um, holotape or a note or a robot sending you this way. Yes. How do you feel about that? If they can pull it off, I think it's going to be an absolutely amazing way to do it. Because you've got you know, you've got Grey Garden that if you go there before Preston ever sends you there, the robots will give you the quest to go. I didn't even know that that was part of the Minutemen settlement the first time I played the game. I just stumbled across it and found the the 
um, Mrs. White and Mr. Green and the other guy. Um, and they sent me to the water treatment plant. I did not know the minimum settlement that I could build up. And then uh, uh, the General Atomics Galleria. Nobody ever sends you there. You just stumble across it. It's If you don't do it right, you end up losing all the robots except one or two. And while it's not an amazing place and they don't have a lot of caps, if you do it right, you know, I still like to keep all those little robots alive. You know, they're, they've got feelings too. <laughs> the only one you can't keep alive is the boxer because um, he's set to die. But I can see, you know, a few, one or two settlements like that. But like I said, I mean, you get a sad story on a holotape and you're listening to it while you're, you know, walking down a deserted building and all you hear are your own footsteps because you're adventuring alone. It has the potential to be amazing. And I'm going to explore the heck out of West Virginia. That's the, Being a set in West Virginia is what excites me the most about 76. That's where you're from, right? Most, well, I lived there. My mother was born there. And after my parents' divorce, we moved to West Virginia. And I lived there from the time I was 16 until I was in my early 30s. Almost 20 years. So. And I think one of the most interesting things about uh, 76 and uh, what they did this past week with the uh, the ND gameplay and, um, mm -hmm. for the YouTubers is uh, that hotel is in the video game. Mm -hmm. but they And they invited everybody to it. And that hotel has actually got a history mm -hmm. that's in the video game as well. Because mm -hmm. um, back, way back then, they actually built a vault for, um, and I'm going off of a video that I've watched. Um, I didn't know about this. They built a vault for um, for the government. For the government, yeah. And um, yeah, it's a, a presidential. It, yeah, uh, it's a presidential yeah. bunker. It it has thousand beds. Yeah, and they kept it going for thirty into years. The late nineties. Mm -hmm. And they probably would have still kept it going if it hadn't been late. I I think that's amazing that you know Bethesda actually did that. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things I actually I, I applaud them to do is that some of the history that they put in like Fallout Four and mm -hmm. Six is real. Mm -hmm. um, it, well, just like with the buildings, like the first time I explored down downtown DC, and then went and looked at a map, and like you know you could see what the Capitol building looked like through the ruins, and they did a really good job with that, and I think they did a good job with Boston also. Yeah, they did. There are some things that are just completely inaccurate. Oh, but, yeah. Um, I'll give you a really good example, and I did a video on it, is uh, uh, the castle. Mm -hmm. It is almost exactly the way it is in real life as it is in the game, except for mm -hmm. it's more of a um, pentagon shape uh -huh. in real life than uh, and it's got it's well, actually, I think it's more of a star than a pentagon shape, as in the video game. But the walls in the um, positioning of the castle, of the location, is actually real, really true to it. Like you can stand on the castle wall and look over to Boston Airport. If you stand on another part of the castle, you can actually look to where. Um, Spectacle Island really is, which is called Deer Island now. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, I think it's, it's I, I love that type. Like, that's freaking phenomenal. And, like, the, the Paul Revere, uh, the, the trail, mm -hmm. that's real. And it actually does go to Bunker Hill. Yeah. Yeah, I, I knew, um, like, a little bit of it, but not quite all the detail that they went into. Oh, uh, this is stuff I uh, most of the place, most of the places that you you go and follow places I hung out as a kid. Yeah, now see that's what makes it exciting. Is it's like I know some of these places, and I really cannot wait to get in there and see what Bethesda has done to them. Because you know, say what you will about them, they do a good job with their environments, at least in oh, my yeah. opinion. You know, I've never once been disappointed in. 
the world they create. It's always been the story that I found lacking for them. But not like their environmental storytelling or their little side quest or their found quest. They do amazing jobs with those. It's, I don't know where they, they get that lost in translation when it comes to a main quest um, storytelling, you know, kind of direction. Oh, yeah. Well, Mark, has a, Mark has a good question. Uh, that kind of goes along with that. Um, yeah, I was hoping you wouldn't see that one. I don't know how to for that one. <laughs> ah. <laughs> um, my favorite quest in a Bethesda game. I don't know. I well, no, I do. It it would have to be doing the quest for Arlen Glass. That is the one quest that left the biggest impression. And no matter how you do it, whether you uh, just go and get the toy parts for him or you take that extra time and go into downtown, uh, the downtown area and get that hollow tape of his daughter to give to him. Because it, it just, you know, it, it leaves a, an impression. And the other half was my favorite quest in any game. Um, oh, I don't know. That's a lot of games to think through. Tough question. Second yeah, part. It is. Second part, especially. Yeah. You know, I like the quests in Jade Empire. But I don't know that any of them, any one of them would stand out and say, oh, you know, you were, I, you know, that was my favorite. But then, you know, you got like games like the Indigo Prophecy that were, had, you know, m moments in it that were really good. And then I just played the Witcher, most of the Witcher 3. And it's like, there was some pretty good quests in that. And, ah, I don't know. I don't think I can answer, answer that one. I honestly don't. I think there's just too many. All right. Well, do you have a game that's a guilty? I do. Admit that you that you play. I do. It is the Persona series. Never heard. I, of it. Yeah, I've yeah. never heard. Of it, so you, you got to explain what it is. Uh, <laughs> the Persona series is um, basically you play as a teenager that goes to high school somewhere in Japan or in the countryside and you know pretty much how Japanese anime romantic high school things go but then at night you're like uh, you weld your personas and do battle with enemies kind of thing it, it it's kind of weird you kind of have to watch the it's harder to describe than uh, it is to play it but it, it they're really good games especially persona 5 they really tightened up the combat in it and it's the most fluid combat i have played in any game it was brilliant what they've done with it I could not watch her super seducer, Mark. I took, I watched it for five minutes and had to turn it off. I couldn't do it. <laughs> that is just not my cup of tea. <laughs> oh, some of it was hilarious. I couldn't. I can't. I, you know, I'm not I gonna couldn't even. Me, I'm sorry, I couldn't make it through all the videos, but uh, some of them were absolutely hilarious. Oh, I had to watch it just for the giggles. Yeah. No. <laughs> Uh, that was one I disgracefully bowed out of and uh, did not leave any mark that I was there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to wipe this up and act like I wasn't here. Yeah, I, I, I don't need to remember that I'd seen that. I Actually, I couldn't believe that he was playing it and continued playing it. I'm like, <laughs> well, I, I thought it was a joke. Tonight. 
I thought it was a joke at first, and I'm like, I can't see him playing this kind of game. <laughs> but apparently he did, so, you know, it, it takes all kinds, I guess. <laughs> I mean, you wouldn't think that I could... Mark. Go ahead. Yeah, you, you wouldn't think that I would be, you know, able to amuse myself for hours picking turnips in a farming simulator, but... You know, I find a lot of enjoyment in doing that. It's, That's just you know, I'm, but you know, then in the next five minutes, I could load in a game where I'm shooting your face off. <laughs> you <know? laughs> it just depends. If you were to um, have a uh, be like a game developer, what would be the name of your company? Um, I would not be a game developer because. Because I would come up with horrible games. <laughs> yeah, they would uh, never make any sense, and my dog would probably be the master evil or the evil mastermind in everyone. So would, the name would, of your company would be Horrible Games. Probably, <laughs> more than likely, either that or it'd be named after my dog. My dog is taking on a personality all of her own. Oh, that's awesome! Oh, Could yeah. possibly name it. Refund, please. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> nice. I, I I know I'm a, a game player, not a game maker. Yeah, but you've played Thanks. enough games, you got to know what you would like. Oh. So, so, I mean, it's not like you have to actually, I mean, you just have to kind of come up with ideas or at least be that, that guiding thing or whatever. Let somebody else come up with the idea and then you go, all right, these are the corners we're not going to cut, and we need to make sure we hit all of this stuff. All right, yeah. Go do it. I, I would run it into the ground because I, I would probably make games that I enjoy more than what games other people, you know, games other people would enjoy. And I don't, I don't know. I, just, I would not. I honestly would not want to be a game developer and have to have that headache. I would rather just be the person who gets to enjoy the games. Very well. Sounds fine to me. I don't mean to, you know, to, to wimp out on the question, but it's all right. That, no. That's my honest answer. I, I, it's more of the idea of what you would call the company. Well, I, I see. I would have to want to have that kind of a company, though. Just to, just to get an idea of just either whether or not you would have a whimsical name or, uh. um. You know, uh, kind of a serious badass type name, but you know, hey, nah, <laughs> fair enough. I'm sorry, <laughs> not I'm gonna not pressure you into it. Should be developing games on how to jar vegetables. Yeah, yeah really. Canners are us. <laughs> All right, folks, is there any other questions you got going here? Not to put you on the spot, but I'm going to put you on the spot. Okay. You are very good at visiting people's streams. Mm -hmm. Do you have a favorite streamer? Besides me and Gary? <laughs> no. I honestly know because you all bring something different. And I enjoy watching all of you. You know, Plaz has been streaming late at night around, well, it's around 11 midnight my time. I don't know what time it is his. But, you know, I, so I get that, like, late at night and he's kind of very chill and relaxed and you know well you know he's a chubby little man in a big big red dress and it makes me laugh and then you've got you know um draco's a little bit more serious but you know tries to joke a little bit but you know he's very intent and focused on what he's doing and uh jpic uh, is yeah jpic still here yeah I pictured him, honest to God, he's going to laugh, I know this, but um, just talking to him in chat, 
I don't know why, but I just pictured him as this, you know, uptight businessman in a suit. And then the first time I saw it, one of his screens with uh, his face cam, <laughs> I laughed quite loudly. But yeah, I do. I don't talk a lot in JPEX because he always looks so focused and it's like, oh, should I bother him? Should I not? So I just kind of lurk in his, but I, I do show up. And I honestly, I like, uh, and I'm not just saying this because he's on here. I like watching JPEG streams because his voice is very soothing. Yes, it is. It is. He doesn't it... yell. He's not vulgar. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, even though I try, try to get him to be vulgar sometimes. Um, He'll, I have to tell you a funny story in a minute. Um, but his voice is very soft and soothing. Like, I mm-hmm. love listening to his voice. And uh, the story is, uh, I don't know who in here caught JPIC's first stream of Odyssey. But uh, he had to climb the Zeus statue. And Zeus is completely naked. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, oh, that's a great shot of Zeus's taint. Like, that's a big taint or something like that. So I had got out and went out and bought the game and decided to climb the front half of Zeus. And I t- <laughs> and happened to take a pic- couple pictures of me hanging off in Zeus's Thunderbolt, if you know what I mean. <laughs> and I sent them to JPEG. That's too funny. I also sent them to Gary, but yeah. <laughs> but no, I I do enjoy popping into all of your streams, and um, I just recently started popping into Dies because she kind of fits like right in the middle part of my day, either when I'm making dinner. So I, in fact, normally when I'm talking with her, I'm trying to cook dinner at the same time, and uh, or I'm sitting there waiting for my daughter to finish up her class to bring her home and so I can catch her stream for a little bit there. So you guys kind of all like shift your time. So sometimes I can just go from one stream to another. And like I said, sometimes I do open up two computers and watch two streams at a time. That's awesome. I can tell you when I get home, sorry, I don't mean to interrupt you. Uh, When I get home from work, I don't do much, but you know, play video games and go to bed. I get disappointed when somebody's not streaming. Because yeah, it it's, time been, it's been a dry week. It's like, all right, what am I going to do from this time until maybe midnight when Plaz is going to hopefully stream? Or And then it's like, well, I could stream, but no, I don't have a good mic. So. Yeah. You know, it's like, I don't know. It's weird because I don't watch a lot of TV anymore. Um I normally just end up watching YouTube or when my uh, boyfriend's not at work, he works three to 11. He, um, on his days off, sometimes we'll watch movies on Netflix, but not, uh, not so much just regular TV. I mean, there's really not that much on anymore. Although I do like, um, oh, uh, that tattoo show, I forget with, uh, uh, Ink Master. I do like that. In Forged and Fire. I know who knew I <laughs> never oh, thought I like that. A, a tattoo show, but I do. Um so yeah, it's like I, I've and I never used to, you know, like join in streams until this summer. And it's like if chat's not going a thousand miles a minute like on a uh, an ox horn or like average baiters or someone like that. You know, I'm average baiter. He's funny. Uh, apparently he's quitting YouTube. Yes. I, I read yeah. that. Yeah. That's really, I'm really sad because he's really, funny. I don't even know who that dude is. He's very, very, uh, vulgar and fun. Oh, really? Yeah. He's absolutely. I remember watching one of his episodes. He goes, I promised myself I wasn't going to swear. The next thing it was, fucking shit. Nice. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. It says every time I show up in a stream, I think, oh, God, I hope they don't think I'm a stalker. 
Because <laughs> you know? it's like it's almost always the same people in there, and it's like they're gonna think I'm stalking them. <laughs> <laughs> nah, that's that's the way it usually ends up being in the community. When you're available, you make the stream, and when you're not, you don't. Yeah. But it's also fun getting to talk to the same people over and over again. You know, I mean, like, you get right. a big YouTuber, and they don't, you know, their stream flies by so fast. And not just, you know, on YouTube, the, the Twitch streamers, too. I don't, like, watch a lot of them. Actually, I don't think I watch really any of them at all. Maybe if they post something on YouTube. But, um, you know, their, their streams fly by so fast. It's like, what's the point? Almost, you know, it's like, and, you know, people are throwing bits at them, whatever else they're doing. And it's like, I almost feel like they're in my life. Out playing a video game just for those bits, you know what I mean, and and the compliment. And it's like nothing has been soft porn. Oh, we're getting I, some I, uh, some noise from your mic. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm I'm <laughs> not, sorry. That's all right. <laughs> I, I'm used to doing things when I watch the streams. I'm not used and to even more, in spot. and even more so. You're not used to actually talking. When you're watching not streams. really, no. Yeah. But the last time I watched Oxhorn streams, the only comments he commented on were the people that actually donated money. And when there were no donations coming in, he only chose comments that complimented him. And I'm like, wow, you've come to that. And I, I won't watch a live stream of his anymore. And that oh, was I didn't like, know no school stream. I mean, oh, shit, did I say that? <laughs> um, and that was like a week before or the, the Thursday before he hit a million subs and I'm like yeah no I'll watch your lore videos but I kind of lost all respect for him at that point and I won't watch a live stream of his. yeah I haven't watched he, one of his fact, live streams in probably a year I won't I've even noticed I've even stopped kind of watching all of his lore videos as they come out I kind of if I don't have anything to watch, I'll watch him. But it just kind of left a really bad taste in my mouth about, about him. And, and who is this again? I'm sorry. Oxford. Oh, Oxford. yeah, yeah. So that's what I thought. Yeah. So, Your mic might have cut out when I when you said his name. Yeah, it's my headphones have one of those little pushy things on the, the wire. And I keep... I, and it doesn't do anything bad, but apparently it does today. Right. I'm sorry. Oh, that's all right. It's all right. Mark wants to know what kind of build you're going to do in 76. I'm guessing character build. And uh, oh. from what you said earlier, probably a sneaky sniper type. Well, I definitely want that exotic weapons perk card. I really want to get that because I really want to use a crossbow. I would like to be able to use, um, I like, like, the deliverer type weapons, and I love the Overseer's Guardian turned into a sniper rifle, um, so something along that, but if I can get that crossbow, I'll probably go mainly crossbow, um, but I do, I plan on actually looking at my perk cards and switching them in and out as need. So if I'm traveling with Plaz or somebody else and they need a healer type, then I can throw those cards on and be the group healer. Um, if I'm traveling alone, I want that lone wanderer perk so I can, you know, do my thing as a lone wanderer. And then if I choose to meet up with somebody, you know, that I don't even know that's just running around the world, I can switch that out. And and I think that's what the beauty of the perk cards is going to allow us, you know, multiple builds on one character on the fly. And I don't know of any other game that does that. It just remains to be seen if it's been done well. Right. Are you... uh? Getting sick of uh, 
all this stuff that's coming out about 76? Like, you sick of hearing about it, or you just want to, like, you know, I'm not um, hearing about it. I just want to see some gameplay. Well, we'll be seeing gameplay at 10 o'clock in the morning on, the, on Monday. Right. Um, and I do like the fact that the gameplay we're going to be seeing is not coming from Bethesda employees. I do like that it's, you know, random outside people. But I think the thing that really gets me about all the coverage on Fallout 76 is the negativity that's been expressed. And I'm sorry, I don't know how anybody can hate something before they even really see anything about it. And when, as a society, did it become imperative that we know everything about a game before it's released? You know, a long time ago, the only time you knew a game was coming out was if it came up, it popped up on the shelf. You didn't know nothing about that game. You had to take it on blind faith when you picked up that game and paid your money and went home and played it, whether mm-hmm. it was going to be good or not. But now, you know, everybody expects to know everything about the game, but why can't we just have that mystery? And, you know, I don't know. That's me. But have I searched for every bit of information out there I can find on it? Absolutely. Because I want to be informed, but I don't want to know the storyline. I don't really. I'm still debating on whether I actually want to watch any gameplay on Monday. I think for me, for me, it's I'm more like. I am so curious. I am chomping at the bit for this beta. Mm-hmm. Uh, most of these games for me is like weapons. Mm-hmm. I is got to have good weapons. And that's what I want to see is what type of weapons can you have. Mm-hmm. So that's the stuff in the building. I am so like, yeah, about the building. So yeah. I'm curious about that stuff. The storyline, I want to find out on my own. Right. Or when I'm playing with my friends. That's like when they said, oh, well, we're releasing the whole game in the beta. And I'm like, no, I don't want to know the whole game in the beta. I mean, no, I don't think we're going to be able to unlock the whole entire main quest line and do it properly in the beta. But I don't want to know. I want there to be something that they hold back for when the game comes out that, you know, you don't discover and I know there's no way I can explore the whole map during the beta because number one, they're not going to give us that kind of time. If it was a 24 seven thing and I could stay up for three or four days in a row and play the game, I, you know, um, to discover everything I would do it. You know, I've done it before. Um, but you know, with them only giving us four to eight hours on the servers a day, it's not going to allow that. Real- how do you feel about that? Actually, if they are doing it to fix things that they find going wrong, I'm fine with it, actually. Um, I know a lot of people aren't. A lot of people are mad about it. But I'm as long as that's what they're actually doing is fixing problems. Because I would really like them to, you know... I know that the game is going to crash on November 14th or 15th, whenever everybody can get it downloaded, because I hear it's a pretty big download thing. But um, it's going to crash, because not everybody who pre-ordered it is going to be able to play during the beta. I know a lot of people who've pre-ordered it who are upset at the time because they're going to be gone. So they're not going to have a chance to play it at all. And then a lot of people are waiting for people to stream the beta um, and to decide whether they're going to buy the game or not. So I think a lot more people are going to you know, decide, okay, well, this game doesn't look like a piece of crap. I want to buy into it now. So more people are going to be pl- trying to play it on November 14th than are going to be playing it during the beta. And I think the game is going to crash first day. And if not, second day. 
<laughs> yeah, see, that's one of my, well, I mean, yeah, I am worried about that. The whole reason why I pre-ordered it is so I could get into the beta, and mm-hmm. they're going to be beta testing, or have the potential to be beta testing while I'm at work. So right. I'm not even going to be able to get any game time in there. Right. I mean, it's not going to make or break me anyway, but, you know. You know, as long as I get to play a couple hours of the beta, you know, would I like to play it 24-7? Absolutely. Who wouldn't? But, you know, as long as they are honestly, you know, doing it to shut down, to try and fix errors and bugs and things that crop up, good on them for doing it. And having the balls to do it. But if they're just, you know, trying to limit the amount of content we can discover, then, you know, boo on them. But, you know, I don't know. We're not going to ever really know their full reasoning why they're doing it if it's other than what they've said. Right, right. All right. Anything else going on? Um... See, Volko, you were worried that we're going to have nothing. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't think you guys would find enough to talk about, or I'd have enough answers for you. See, no problem. Well, um, it looks like everybody's, you know, basically was talking about, uh, just. A little bit of stuff here and there on uh, 76 and whatnot. Um, so what what do you, what other videos do you have planned coming up on your channel? Let's go ahead and start uh, going that uh, route. I'm hoping if I can get it done tomorrow, my Cannibal Johnson Bar and Grill with attached treehouse should hopefully go up Monday. Um, I need to run out tonight and find a few skulls in uh, the wasteland, but because I need them for down in the basement. But yeah, I'm I'm really excited about this one. This is like the most far out, way out thing I've ever built in Fallout. Um, because it 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 the getting the building up in the tree was funny to say the least but i got it up in there and you know i have modded trees in there but uh because i had to place them just where i needed them but uh it it looks it's something i don't think i've ever seen anybody do a tree house i'm sure people have but i've not seen any videos on it because i don't want a lot of settlement builds because i don't want to implant other people's ideas in my head you know and then end up trying to copy that right. I, I want them all to be my very own ideas so i re- i really limit my uh my ideas in fact i started building a ship at coastal cottage and then mikey said his last plank and i went and ripped it down because i didn't <laughs> i didn't want anybody to think that i was copying off of it it's like yep nope no ship at coastal cottage because i had, was building a ship down in the ravine and i'm like okay cannibal bar and grill uh-huh. and uh well, I'm kind of sorry. Oh no, no, no! Oh my God, no! I'm well, I, I get, it's I, adorable. I, I, I can tell you that, um, for the most part, most of us we're not gonna, you know, we're not gonna think that you were thieving it or you know stole somebody's idea or whatever, you know. But uh, if if at all that you ever see somebody's stuff and and it gives you an idea or whatever. You know, just don't be afraid to say, "Oh, by the way, I saw JPEG did this." And oh yeah, no, you know, I one thing definitely and, give. You know. Yeah, no, I I big believer in give credit where credit's due. Yeah. You know, if I, just I hate got the, idea, yeah, I just hate the idea that you got rid of something just because you didn't want somebody to think that you were still oh, an idea. No. Well, no, because it would have been like right after, and they'd be like, "Yeah, I didn't want that idea in the back of their head." And I hadn't gotten very far, and I really wasn't happy with where it was going. <laughs> But I was getting so frustrated trying to build from the top floor down into the ravine that I was like, anything would be better than this headache. Because I wanted, I wanted, you know, like to put a trading hub down in 
in the bottom of the ravine with just a building at the very top. So it looked flat with the land and you couldn't tell there was a ravine there at all. And it just wasn't going the way I wanted it, but I'm very happy with where it and it's ended up. So I think uh, his plank was a good thing in disguise Zach, to be honest, because it's gotten me to where I am now. But after that, I don't know, maybe a little bit of 76. I don't know once it, you know, the the beta drops. But definitely Call of Cthulhu when it comes out on the 30th. I'm okay. definitely going to have either a stream, like I said, or um, a Let's Play of it. And wow. hopefully I can get my daughter to join me on that one. Well, that would be fun. Yeah. That would be really fun. Cool. Um, so we do have a, a question. Plasman wants to know when you're, uh, how long before you see your first live stream? And uh, probably at the end of the month with uh, uh, Call of Cthulhu, because he he was like, oh, you need to start doing live streams now. And I'm like my daughter and I were talking about it on the on the way to her class that morning. So it was kind of funny he brought it up then. But yeah, I'd already made plans for it. It's just, I don't want to, um, yeah, I, I enjoy watching you guys live stream so much. I don't want to do it when one of you guys is live streaming. Cause it's like, you know, I don't want to miss what you guys were doing either. Cause I enjoy right. watching it, you know? So it's like, I don't know. It, it's wherever I can probably fit it in. But then you guys are like all different time zones. And I'm like, I don't know. Mark was talking about his daughter climbing ropes last night. And I looked at my clock. It's like midnight. I'm like, oh, that's kind of cute that his daughter's up this late. And then I'm like, wait a minute. What time zone are you in? <laughs> you know? Yeah. And because class is like, oh, it's eight o'clock in the evening here. I'm like, yeah, but it's midnight here. <laughs> It's like because I asked Mikey tonight, what time zone are we talking? You know, 8 p.m. Who's time? Right. You know, because I don't know. It 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 gets strange. So, are you East Coast or? <laughs> yeah, I'm in okay. Pennsylvania right now. Right. Or okay. both, yeah. Yeah. So the most important thing is that you stream when it's convenient for you. Well, see, I'm retired, and basically, I have all the time in the world other than when my kids demand that I need to pick them up and take them somewhere <laughs> you know right? because I you know I suffer from insomnia I could stream at 2 in the morning and be perfectly happy doing it you know but this is nobody's going to be there to watch it hey we have people who do that uh, yeah, oh yeah uh, Otto doesn't usually stream till like 1 or 2 o'clock in the morning yeah, I don't know when uh, that kid sleeps yeah, Shell, I think normally I uh, see that they he's posted um, a, you know, a thing in your notifications box at like 2 in the morning that he was streaming. And I'm like, oh, I'm sorry I missed it. But then last night he actually went early. So I was able to jump in and watch one of his for the first time. And it was really interesting. He showed me off his little uh, building he built for Mark at Finch Farm and it was very cool. It was very cool. He does really nice builds. Yes, he does. He does. He's 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 that kid or guy is amazing on detail because every time he posts a comment on my uh, videos, he is down to the precise minute of when something happened, and he'll comment on it. And I'm like, when did that happen? I gotta look. At, I have to look at my own video. Go back to the times when he mentions. Just to refer an answer back to them. I do that sometimes, not all the time, but every once in a while, if something you know, I want to reference something specific in a video, I will put a timestamp on it. But not often. Oh, because I did with you when I was talking about the porch swing when you first yeah. showed off the lighthouse. Because there was like one perfect shot when you were looking at that lower pier, and I'm like, right there, it would look so cool. But I don't think he can build it. No, but I still I, asked if he could. I'm racking my brain about how to do that out. And if anybody can figure it out, let me know. Use uh, that is such a great idea. Use uh, electrical conduits. I meant to say that. In yeah. The video. I was gonna say I, that's what I thought. I thought electrical conduits and maybe trying to like hide 
one floors, of the wooden yeah. benches, the one in the wooden park uh, things. Yeah. Uh, but you I'll have try to hide something at the bottom. But I mean, that was kind of like where my head You could was have it there. You it. just wouldn't be able to interact with it. Right. You wouldn't be able to. It would never rock, but. Right. It would, you know, it wouldn't rock anyways. It's fallout, you know. Right. We can't even have a river boat to sail down the river in. Yeah, no kidding. Oh, no. See, I thought Fallout 4 would have been the perfect opportunity to give us a motorcycle to run around the wasteland on. I completely agree. I think we should have had the uh, um, the motorcycle with some saddlebags so you can put shit in it. and yep. you, know, you could go park it outside of you know, the green tech building and, you know, park it there, take the key with you so nobody mm -hmm. else takes off with it and go in and you yep. can come out and use it to load up your shit and take off to the yeah. next spot. I mean, yeah, if you I don't have to go that fast, you could still, you know, do it yeah. slow enough to, so you can render. I am 100% a walk everywhere person. I mean, follow our, the Witcher 3, I use the horse like one percent of the time and walked everywhere the whole map and but i would have ridden the motorcycle all around fallout 4 never would have gotten off of it unless to. <laughs> it's a little disheartening that we can build fusion generators but we can't build a, or repair a vehicle yeah well even just like a regular electrical generator you got a gas motor and you can't repair these other vehicles or anything. Well, yeah. On the other hand, I was going to say it would make sense that 210 years after an apocalypse, no, number one, nobody's going to know how to drive. Uh, I just don't. Well, I guess the vertebrates they would have been passed down the knowledge right. on how to fly, but you know, nobody's going to really know how to drive a car. And number two, you know, it's like who maintained a car long to be able to get it to run or kept it in good enough condition because I think every car in the wasteland is a rusted piece of crap. Right. Well, I can actually explain a, a good theory on how to learn to drive because if in Vegas they use the memory den um, Oh, the, the loungers to, yeah, to learn, teach themselves how to drive the bomber. Right. Or fly the bomber. Yeah. But we do that now. What do you mean? Um, that's how a lot of people, you know, they have to have like so many hours in a flight simulator. Right, 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 right. You know. But I mean, I'm just saying like that's how people would learn how to drive and fall out. Yeah. But who would have made those? Well, who made the flight simulator in Vegas? Mm -hmm. Well, that would have been part of the Air Force because that's a training tool, but we don't use like that kind of a training aid to learn to drive. So, you know, they would mm. have had to, you see what I mean? Yeah, yeah. There wasn't one. Available. I mean, not Where saying that it would, not, I'm not <laughs> saying it's not a great idea. I think it is, and that would probably be how they would actually put it in there, but it wouldn't make sense that, you know, Either so I don't know. Fair enough. You win this <laughs> round. I'm sorry. Well, I, I hate to put an end to this, but because uh, we've been having a pretty good time, but I do have something I have to run off and go do. So I am going to have to put take an end to the stream, unfortunately. And uh, not a problem. Yeah, I mean, this has been a, a a great stream. This is probably close to. I think it's probably the second longest stream we've had. An amazing conversation we've had, and a uh, uh, pretty damn good time. Well, I really want to thank you guys for inviting me, having me on, even though I was a little scared to do it, but I did it, and hey. I'm very glad I did it. And yeah. you did a damn good job of it. Well, Fabulous. You. Once you got going, I mean, we had to, like, you know, <laughs> know. pull on the reins and say, whoa, slow down there. Yeah, I know. You get <laughs> me talking about video games, that's... Hey, that's a, that was a compliment, because yeah. you, 
you you were a little nervous at first and uh but yeah you know, once you got going it was just like having a regular conversation with you it was great stuff yeah well thank you well again thank you for having me i really have had a fun time tonight you are very welcome and you are always welcome in my discord i'm sure um anybody else on here that has a discord would probably say the same thing you're more than welcome to join us and just come in for a chat anytime you want to no, well, thank you quite often we'll be watching somebody stream like we're going to be watching jpeg stream and we'll be sitting in somebody's discord just chatting while we're in there because it's you know easier than typing <laughs> <laughs> yeah it really i know i'm a horrible scholar so yeah. you guys have heard seen oh, oh have so you seen some of my chats <laughs> right? yeah. I, I had to actually explain something to jpeg today because my spelling was so bad <laughs> But anyway, uh, I get, like Gary said, thanks for coming in. I am so happy you did. I want to thank everybody in chat for coming in. Uh, great uh, action in the chat tonight. We had up to, uh, I think, 15 watchers at one point. Uh, we're getting better at this. Content's getting better at this. Speak for yourself. <laughs> I thoroughly enjoy it. Uh, those are the channels of everybody that was on tonight. Please give us some love. Give Bald Girl some love. We got her up to 31 subs today. And I want to thank you guys for that again. That was amazing. Let's uh, continue to give each other love. Um, yeah. Thanks yeah. for watching. Yeah. And uh, we'll get you more subs. You just keep putting out the content. I will try. I, awesome. I'm doing my best. That's all it takes. All right. Well, thanks, everybody. I appreciate it. And um, Vault Girl, I'm so happy that you decided to go ahead and join us. It was a great time. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Night, everybody. Good night, everybody. <laughs>